up? Holy farts. We haven't been able to scream at you for like a month. But you can finally hear us. Let again. it all out. Wanga Jabugamina. Anyways, caps him out. Hey you. Ah. Uh, my traditional protein shake. Hey, background character, is there any reason why the third Thank you, Shark Boy. Royal stream wasn't in your video or were you just too jealous of our main character energy? The onion shall rise again. What do you mean? Third battle? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, lots of drama to talk about today, everybody. Month? More like months we haven't been able to scream at you. Hold on, how many times have I streamed recently? It hasn't been that few. Actually, it hasn't been very many. How many times have I streamed the last three months? It's time for ads. <coughs> oh, here, I can turn the ads on. Or, I can turn on your ability to play ads. It's a two year subscription. Doinkers, thank you, man. In the trash. Uh, let's see, is it time for ads? Okay. My hair is green now. I kind of like how my hair looks now. I think it looks cool where it's like mixed, like blonde brunette type thing. I did not like when it was fully blonde. Oh, nobody's redeeming the it's time for ads. I guess chat doesn't like ads anymore. We've turned a new leaf. Wow. We're mature now. We've moved on. We don't think it's funny to play ads. Oh. Ladies and oh, gentlemen, never mind. it's time for ads. <laughs> Uh, we had a good 10 second run, everybody, of maturity, and now Twitch chat is spamming ass again. Curious Chips, thank you, man. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, what did you say? There's like a thousand so subs coming in. Play so ads. Sorry, Doug. <sighs> Unacceptable. Uh, I, I mean, there's, there's, thank you for all the subs. There are a shitload of subs. Um, also, there's no pre roll ads for 20 minutes now because somebody played ads. Um, yeah, a lot. Thank you very much for the large amount of subs, everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah, I've not been streaming much uh, the past few months. I mean, basically, I'm just going to talk about what I've been up to um, and go through Shuffle Mania in particular. Uh, why are you guys... Where did this pepper come from? Why is there a pepper up there? I know that's from the last stream. I don't remember where he came from. Ah, there you go. Anyway, yeah, today's gonna be chill. I'm gonna talk about um, all the Shuffle Mania Hello, stuff. Doug. I wasn't able to catch your stream a few days back, but I hope you had fun playing Shuffleboard with your friends. Love you lots. We're gonna talk about Shuffle Mania. Um, hey, spoilers, Doug. if you haven't seen the show. Yeah, I bet by now you've kind of missed hearing this TTS say <sighs> that. I have. Is this, that wasn't the hey, same. Doug. So, um, I'm gonna talk about Shuffle Mania if you haven't seen it. Uh, you know, spoiler alert, I guess. Um, it was the show that I did on Sunday that I think was really, really fun. Shuffle Mania, Doug Doug. Um, and I'm just going to kind of talk about all the different things that, that happened with this show. And um, how... Like, I thought it... Sorry I'm late with the early gang hauling, but I'm at work right now. So Apology all accepted. early gang, I guess. Uh, thanks, Taro. I was wondering where the traditional Taro greeting was. Um, so much drama. <laughs> yeah, if you want to watch the show and not, you know, see what happens, um, don't watch today's stream. Basically, uh, short version, last three months have been the busiest of my life. It has been really, 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 really busy and, uh, and draining. And part of that was this show, um, which hopefully it's clear why this show took an absolute shit ton of time if you watch it. Like, did we, I put a lot of effort into this. <laughs> Uh, and so th this has taken a bunch of stuff on top of the, the other three months. I mean, the last three months has been like, it was the C the Rosa birthday stream and all that. And then trying to follow up with all the different, you know, obligations for that, like the raffles and follow up streams and everything right into PAX West where it did like meet and greets and, a, and my first panel right into moving to LA, um, which I got pretty sick while that happened into the. Uh, some of the streams like the cooking shrimp in the hot tub with Parkster and whatnot and uh, Getting this place took a lot longer than I thought it would or getting this place set up like this room has horrific acoustics So it took like a long time for me to I set up sound panels all over the, the whole room Which took like a day and then it turns out they didn't work so I had to get new ones and 
And obviously, like, moving to a new state, so there's, like, new health insurance and new license plates and um, just tons of utilities and stuff to set up. And then um, did various collab things, like Point Crow's Roast and Cutie Cinderella's Gala, which I ended up putting a good amount of time into, like, prepping weird things for those. Plus various other streams, like the Guy Fury cooking stream. That ended up taking a lot of time to set up. Uh, plus, I had, like, the City Skylines stream, which was sponsored. And I wanted to make sure that was really good because that was helping pay for Shuffle Mania because Shuffle Mania was very expensive. Um, and like it just took way more time to program that than expected because there was lots of tech issues. Plus all the YouTube work because I do a bunch of YouTube stuff every week. Plus, um, what else has there been? There's been personal things. Oh, then I had to go back to Washington and move out of my place properly. Rayos, thank you. And I was I went to TI while doing that. And then I went to TwitchCon too and got sick from that. And then got back from moving out of Washington fully and then got the flu. So then I was like really sick with the flu for like two weeks. And I finally felt healthy the day of this show while also setting all this up. So what I thought would be cool is to go over like what it took it's to put this on. Subscription. That's um, cash the Believers. The Thank you for the two years, Believers. You're, you guys are the best. Um, this is maybe, so I, I realized, because I, I don't have energy for like a, a huge, you know, planned stream today. I was like, ah, I just want to go stream, go live and talk about something. Um, I don't know about you guys. For me, I think it's really interesting of like, how does a show like this happen? Like what goes into this, right? Of like making all this, sh like, how do you get from, I have an idea for a show to this? And so I thought that would be cool to talk about. And this is what I used to do as a job, by the way. Um, you know, this is like when I worked in esports for three years, like I put on shows. And so this was the, I was, I was f familiar with this whole process, but not from the perspective it's of I'm on camera talking. That's cash um, in the trash. I, uh, thank you, Official Freshy. A lot of people, it seems like a lot of creators when they do a big show like this, because this is my first one, they then do a stream where they're like, here's, let's just like talk about how the show went. I'm less interested in how the show went and rewatching it and more being like, here's what it took to plan which may or may not be exciting to you. So anyway, that's that's what I was going to talk about today. Um, also, I want to talk about YouTube streaming and uh, and try to think about how I want to do that. So that is that is the plan. I will now unpause the alerts and replay music, and we will uh, continue to, to yell loudly about things. I'm hungry. Can you <clears throat> order me a pizza? Twitch chat's got you. How's your day going? Pretty good. I'm, I'm really tired. That's um, cash in the trash. Yeah, this has been a, a really, really intense three months. <laughs> so this week I've been like chilling a little bit. Philbo was here uh, for until last night, which was really fun. So I got to spend time with him, but I have not gotten to like completely chill, you know. So um, the next couple days I'll totally chill. And then hopefully starting next week, I'm actually streaming regularly again for the first time in like three months. Because uh, I currently have nothing planned now. Like... It was this three months of craziness, it's and now it's like, and I got nothing, you know? That's cash in the trash. Mm. Uh, so in Next theory... Shuffle Mania, chat needs to be able to talk. We are a character with many minds, like the opposite of a hive mind. Okay. P-Blot, thank you for the one year. I'm sure this is... I'm, I'm probably going to be all over the place with this show. Uh, again, if you haven't seen it, you can just go on my YouTube channel, and the whole VOD is here. Um, one of the things that I kept having to tell the production team is like, I want Twitch chat visible in every single shot, <laughs> which is not what people do in normal like production shows. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, I really want it everywhere. And they were like, well, we'll put Twitch chat in the TVs in the background. Like, you can see you guys were here, which I thought was really cool. Um, but as we were getting close to the date, I was like, no, dude, I, I think with literally every single shot. Initially, it was just going to be like the graphics. Um, and then, you know, if, if I like am showing how the event works or whatnot, we would show uh, Twitch chat and then basically yeah so like uh nope still not there anyway I basically was like look pretty much every single shot I want Twitch chat in there because Twitch chat is such a character so I fought for you chat you just weren't able to talk Supreme Cow Jumper thank you man hey Doug I just brapped so hard what does that mean? anyways what are we doing today I've been out of it for three months okay I don't know the latest lingo from the the kids all right I don't know how to get the Rizzler I don't know I don't know what new new wondrous language you've cooked up all right you've ironically got to teach me. Sunday was my actual birthday so it was nice to hear happy birthday sang so many times there you go happy birthday you're welcome we got you maybe change the title in OBS what title what are you talking about BTW, with the tennis stream, you have finally cleared your debt. Okay. You no longer row us any more streams. We'll jump around. You can okay. now officially retire. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen 
the, if you haven't seen the show, go turn it off and watch it later or watch the YouTube cut later. But um, there was, in fact, a okay, I guess we'll just skip to tennis because <coughs> people are already asking about tennis. Um, it, was, it was just a tennis show the whole time. It was all just for tennis. Um, so <laughs> this was OK, we'll jump ahead to tennis. Um, because I want to talk about like how this show developed and like from the concept to where to how it actually got to here. Um, but the tennis thing was we were talking. So I was talking with Jerma, who helped with like the creative of the show from off brand's perspective. And um, let me throw on music. Uh oh, YouTube. Tears. There you go. So we were talking about at the end of this show, what would the winners get? Right? Like, what do the winners get? Do they just get a trophy or like or what? Um. Wait, Germa was involved with this. Germa was very involved with this. Um, so we were like, okay, what, like, what is the purpose for this whole show? Like, what, okay. why, why does it matter that we got the winners, that they won this event? And we were trying to come up with like some fun reason for like, how does it end, right? And one, like, I, it was me or Germa was like, oh, would it be funny if like we just, we just wanted to play shuffleboard with the winners, like that was it. And we're like, oh, okay, that's that would be stupid and silly. Um, and then I think Jeremy was like, oh, what if we just wanted to play tennis with them or something? I was like, oh, that's that's funny. And then another one was like, they um, the winners of the show would get to, we, that we they would win the show. I am Spartacus, thank you, man. Like these two would win the show and then we'd be like, it turns out the whole reason we're doing this is because we need you guys to help us with Cuphead. We can't beat this boss in Cuphead. Jeremy and I have been stuck for like a month. Can you guys beat it for us? You seem great at video games. And then we would just literally turn Cuphead on on this TV, and then they would just start playing Cuphead and like have to beat this level for us, and then we would end. And I was like, okay, that's pretty like that's pretty funny. That would have been a very funny ending. Um, and we were like, oh, okay, maybe it's that, or maybe we make this joke about like, oh, do you guys want to play tennis with us later? And then we end the show. And then I was doing my um, very important thing, which is that there's a room in my apartment that I have no furniture in, so I just throw a ball against the wall. And I call it the ball wall room. Shit, who is that 12 months up? Thank you very much for the 12 months. Appreciate it. Um, so I was I was playing ball wall in the ball wall room. It's just an empty room. And I just throw a ball against the wall over and over and over. This happens, like, like literally, this is my favorite thing right now. Not a joke. And so I was I was in the ball wall room. And then and then I was just like, wait a minute. What if we actually go play tennis? <laughs> like, what if it's not a joke? What if we end the show, right? And then we were like, we weren't going to play tennis. And then we have a person with a mobile camera walk up and we just like put the winners into a van and just drive them to a tennis court and do a full tennis match. Um, and I was like, that is insane. That's such an insane idea for this show. And, um, and so then, and I was like, well, maybe they could like make one in the parking lot or something. So I like got, we got, I got back on a call with, with the EP Dakota and Jerma. And I was like, hey guys, we were talking about like the, you know, a fun, what, what the ending would be like, what we would like supposedly give the winners. What if we, actually go play tennis like could we build a tennis court in your parking lot <laughs> and they were like uh we can <laughs> and i think they kind of were trying to um i think dakota was trying to like indicate to me gently like hey that's gonna be a lot it's gonna be expensive and um it's gonna this is gonna be like a lot of effort and i i eventually i was like no we have to do this and of course germ was down he's like if you want to go really hard on this bit um so with the tennis thing, I mean, we're just jumping to the end here, right? The ending, once we came up with the idea of the ending of tennis, where the whole show is actually just a tennis event, um, I was like, wait a minute. It's way funnier if nobody knows that it's happening. By the way, the alerts are paused. I'll unpause them a little bit once I'm, once I'm done talking so that the text, the Texas speech is way behind right now. That's cash Gaming thing is here. So I was like, it'd be way funny if none of them knew there was going to be a tennis uh, match at the end. And so, um, right, so right. and we realized, wait a minute, but if we're like building a tennis court in the parking lot, how the fuck are we going to like hide that from the players? And so we took so much extra effort to hide the fact that there was a tennis court right next door to the players. We had them like come from a certain angle into the parking lot so that they wouldn't see it we like put up barriers to block it we couldn't practice any of the tennis stuff like the the actual camera movement or anything while the players were there so when the players got there um i would like 
call I would like take them to this area so they weren't looking at the set people who were like putting the net out and the flags for the tennis court area. Like it was super like none of us could talk about tennis. We couldn't me we would just be like, "Oh, the ending." Um I would tell them throughout the show, "Oh, there's a huge prize, but you don't know what it is." We German and I were like wearing tennis clothes underneath I, like I was really hot because I was wearing these tearaway pants with tennis shorts underneath, and then I mean we can just watch this together. Oh well, yeah, wait here. We'll just we'll watch the whole thing for people who haven't seen it. You are probably wondering what is the grand prize? German and I have been working. Uh, we've been working pretty hard on this for both the. Uh, and there is no reason why Germa is dressed as a wizard, by the way. Uh, pretty excited. This is something. I mean. Jerma, how's this, what's this mean to you? At TwitchCon, we had a conversation. Yeah. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> the tennis stream that has been a, a gag in, in this community for a while, I very gently nurtured it for this specific reason. And then Jerma did a stream before this show where he said to his stream, like, hey, guys, it's random, but, like, Honestly, I've been getting into tennis the past couple months. I just like can't find people to play with. So he dropped that during his stream and everybody in his chat was like, oh, of course you're playing tennis, German. That's such a Germa thing. But he was like, yeah, I was like trying to find people to play with at TwitchCon and just like couldn't like nobody. Nobody wants to play tennis. Like it's just super hard to find people. And so we both like seeded the idea that we are just really getting into tennis. He, by the way, German's never played tennis in his life. Not a single time. You would not believe how difficult it is to find people to do this thing. Yeah. And the thing that we're talking about doing, of course, is... <laughs> tennis! tennis! What? 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 what do you you guys want to play? You want to play tennis? This reaction is completely genuine. This is Ludwig's fucking company. He owns the company, and he had no idea because he, he wasn't involved with the show that we built... Ladies and gentlemen, oh. it's time Hey, it's time for ads. ads. Is it actually playing ads? I feel like I need to wait. I'll let text to speech go during this. Hey Doug, I have divorced today and my divorce agent said that the next natural step is going to I your stream. I have divorced today. So yes. Hey Doug, I have divorced today and my divorce agent said that the next natural step is going to your stream. So it, yes. Did anybody hey even Doug. It seems like nobody even got ads. Hey Doug, Terry, something you need to know. I've been cheating on you with Squeaks. Acceptable. Squeaks is great. I love Squeaks. I got ads. A couple people got ads. Okay, somebody got one minute of ads. Great job. Hey, Doug, oh, now I got first ads. First time catching your stream. Finally, I am able to be part of this amazing chat. Welcome, also, Kaigo. cool too, I guess. Been binge watching the content of your chat for days now. Welcome, welcome. Um, the effort really paid off. Shuffle Mania was so fucking fun to watch. I laughed. I cried. I developed a romantic attraction to the Shuffler. What a great time. We all did by the end. Yeah, the shuffler was the best part of it, H. for sure. Thank you for the H, Gabe Thunder. Okay, people are still watching ads. Eh, it seems like the ads are starting to end. Um, eh, okay, you got, you're good. We'll, we'll keep going. Um, so, this is like you give Jonah, Ludwig's I mean, show, or Ludwig's sorry. company. Did you let Shuffler watch movies? What about its pizza? Yeah, we'll talk about the movies, too. Um... This is like Ludwig's company, and we put up tennis court in his parking lot, and he had no idea. None of the players knew at all about the tennis court. The only exception was Stans, because Stans also works at Off Brand, which is the company that helped put this on. And Stans was in one of the calls where we were talking about the tennis stream, and I was like, Stans, you can't tell anybody about the tennis stream. You can't tell anybody that there's going to be tennis at the end. He was like, okay. And then the day of the show, he was walking through the studio, and I was like, hey, just a reminder, don't tell anybody about tennis. And he's like, Oh, I forgot the tennis was happening. I was like, oh, shit. So I didn't even need to, like, if I hadn't reminded Stans the day of the show, nobody would have known that there was tennis. Like, none of the eight players. Four String Ninja, thank you for the five gifts. It's man. I appreciate it. So this reaction of Germa, of Ludwig and Squeaks being like, what? Tennis? And all the players going, what? Tennis? This is, this is all real. And we put, it, this was so incredibly inconvenient for the whole production team just for this moment that, like, kind of landed. <laughs> We're gonna play tennis. We've been looking for partners because German, German, <laughs> German and I got into it, yes! and then we've been looking for for tennis. We're dude. I think lost a country. Hold on a second. Yeah, no, we're playing nothing. So nothing drunk. that he just said was funny. 
<laughs> we, I was just I baffled know. by that the prize is tennis. No, we want to play. Well, we like, dude. So we figured if That's we put awesome. on if we put on this show, right? You guys are very adaptable and whatnot. It's similar skill set to, te but to, 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 to tennis. Just to find tennis partners. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Us, yeah. Right? You could have asked me. I wouldn't have drank so wait, wait, hold long. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you got the plane. You're fine. You're so, all right. cash. That's a close. Trash. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess. I mean, if that the prize. There, down, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Doug and Jeremy's Tennis Mania. I pulled from the wrong part of the tearaway pants, if you're wondering why these did not come off. I practiced them the day before, but I couldn't practice it in the morning, because again, this is, we're like hiding, they did not know I'm wearing tearaway pants, or tennis shit underneath. <laughs> German just is ready, and then Fibble comes to help me, thankfully. Come on guys, let's go! We're playing tennis! Let's go! Come on everybody, we're playing tennis! Let's go everybody, let's go! So this camera is only here for tennis. This camera that is walking through the studio now, this wasn't used the entire rest of the show. <laughs> I mean, I drank so much. Okay, okay, okay. So this is what we're working on, right? Yeah, I know. So I think so. You start up front, right? You start up front. I'll be back. Thank you, Dakota. You start up front. Guys, I'll be back. Come on. This is what we've been working for. This is what we've been working for. Oh my God. We, had to, we had to get so many extra lights and stuff because it was nighttime. That's right, Doug and Jermas, Tennis Mania. And we then we 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 made we re changed the logo at the bottom left too. You guys ready? How many hours it get? How is it? That's right, Doug and Jermas, Tennis Mania. Woo! Okay. Do we leave the mics here? I mean now, would this have been just as funny if the players were aware of it? Probably. And that would have made this way easier. <laughs> what? Well, I'm remember, ready? remember Nadal. Well, yeah. you look like Nadal. <laughs> this is all just like hidden. Oh yeah, and then and then Parks are. Uh, oh, sorry. Thank you to the 12 months, whoever that was. Parkshire, by the way, um, nobody knew that he was involved. He's just been out here in a, <laughs> in a referee. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And this is also not what you wear as a tennis ref, by the way. Shade Wolf, thank you for the 12 months. Yeah, I was just like, oh, my friend Parks is going to be here and like take some pictures and whatnot. And nobody was aware that he would. Yeah. I also bought the most, the, the biggest tennis trophy that I could find online. You be quiet. We're trying to do tennis mania. Are you a ref? Of course he's a ref. Uh, look, he's, sure. What do you think he's dressed like? <laughs> Dude, tennis, tennis, <laughs> tennis refs? Uh, tennis referee. They wear suits. Like they don't. They do not look like this. <laughs> like this is just. This is just not correct. What do you think he's dressed like? Like most of what happened during this whole tennis section was wrong. Like it was all incorrect. We weren't playing the correct rules. Parker doesn't know how tennis works, by the way. That's cash. In A the dying pirate. Uh, pro cyanide. Thank you. Uh, cyanide. Standard tennis game, two versus two. Doubles tennis. I've never played. Also, I so there was also this was also a huge gamble because I didn't know if anybody had played tennis before. I played a little bit in high school. I played for a year in high school, so I have like some background. Germans never played, and they had no idea the eight players um, if they would be good at tennis. And there's a chance that one of them would be good at tennis and would just fucking annihilate us, right? Like if any of them actually played tennis, it would just destroy us. <coughs> Turns out Will Neff um, was a tennis instructor. <laughs> He's that good. So if he had won, we would have just annihilated us. Instead, Ludwig and Squeaks have never played. Need to maintain a level of professionalism. The entire field will be in play. I think the mic is a little quiet. It'll bump up in a sec. Doug and Germa, you there will go. be on the west side of the field. Ludwig and Squeaks. S Q U E E X, Squeaks. Did, like I'm gonna, yeah. Did, did, Masturbate. Did, did you come up with that name yourself? I did back in the day. Why? Because I had a squeaky voice, but now it's more ironic because my voice is so deep. Wouldn't you agree? Interesting. <laughs> Ludwig and Squeaky Toy. This was genuine, by the way. Parkshire, I think he also heard Squeaks' name earlier in the, in the during the show, and he was just like, why? That was his response to Squeaks. <laughs> you will be on the east side of the field. Because I've been standing here waiting for the past four and a half hours, we are running out of time. 
And as such, we will play an expedited round of tennis. It will be first to five points first will be points. the victor. Okay. In addition, You'll pick it up. You'll get it. Okay. Okay. Take the you guys were great at Shuffle Mania. <laughs> it feels so relevant. Yeah. This is what In addition, because we are not doing multiple sets, we will be deciding who is going to start the serve with a coin toss. Okay, we, 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 we can come back to tennis. Then we play all of tennis. All right, you guys ready? Tennis mania? Ready. I don't really remember how to serve, but like... I got one serve in, but I think it, I think it glitched, so it looks like it's fake. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, so we were, we were talking about... We come out here and we start playing tennis, and then... And then we fade, like the credits fade in as we start playing, right? So the bit is like we go out, we start playing tennis, and the credits fade to kind of imply that now we're just playing tennis together. And I, I, I insisted that we play a full match <laughs> so that it's like kind of awkwardly long. <laughs> Which I don't know how it came off for you as viewers, whether this was like, this is going on way too long. <laughs> like it wasn't that long, obviously. It was like five minutes or 10 minutes. Like, I feel like it had to be, like, we had to actually play, right? It's a two-year subscription. <laughs> Rain Strat, thank you. And then me constantly accusing Ludwig and Squeaks of not knowing how to play tennis to me is the funniest thing ever and is worth all, is, like, worth the three months of work. Is just so that I could have forced them to into a tennis match for no reason and be screaming at them that they don't know the rules at tennis and getting annoyed. We're <laughs> just like everybody's serving wrong. I think Parkser took a point away from them. That was not even remotely close. Jerma doesn't realize that that means the point is not relevant. Four strength, thank you again. It's not correct. <laughs> Um, and so then we went. <laughs> Jeremy and I were not in sync on that. And then, okay, we'll do that. We'll do the last shot or the last point. How long does this go? Okay. All right. So here's the final. Here's the final point, right? Oh yeah, the fact that we won is way way funnier. The idea that that Ludwig and Squeaks don't get a prize and that we would win our tournament that we put on is the funniest thing ever to me. And so I'm very happy that we have won. Because if they won, they would have just won, right? Like, we had to actually win, even though Parkster did take a point from them. Baseball game, we played against robots, and they did it like 500 miles per hour. Okay. <laughs> and we win. <laughs> Notice... <laughs> Notice German's shoes. <laughs> this is the last point of the game. He hits it for the win. Loses both of his shoes. <laughs> and then I, I picked this Gran Turismo music for the ending because this to me feels like a Disney movie, like a Disney sports movie ending where the guy overcomes all the odds and wins and proves everybody wrong, but it's just me and Jerma like cheating in tennis and winning against two people who've never played. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. That's it. <laughs> Why? Why are they circling around? <laughs> is any of this happening? Oh, so funny. You want to stand up here now? No, no, you guys lost. You guys lost. Get out of here. Congratulations on winning Tennis Mania 2023. Here is your trophy. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, How does this make you feel winning such a prestigious and absolutely fair game with no missed calls? Uh, I want to thank my mom. There's been a lot of years that she said I would not be able to do this. <laughs> I, I said this wrong. I want to thank my mom. There's been a lot of years she said I can't do this. So like, what, my speech makes no sense. Um, I have even picked up a racket since high school and... Um, <laughs> And I think a lot of my friends said I couldn't come back here and win at a tennis tournament, and I did. And uh, it, it means the world to persevere through that and to make it here and have this trophy. Yeah. Am I thanking my mom or am I blaming her? I'm not clear. I think I'm going to parrot what he said. 
always if that your thing you're going for the thing that you're trying to do love thank you for the 12 months you can do it you know what i mean go for it this this trophy did also did not feel very sturdy so Jeremy was like, I'm going to hold it from the top and then hopefully it breaks during my speech. Unfortunately, it did not break. So, you know, good job on the manufacturers. But if you're wondering why he's holding it weird, like we were hoping it would like snap off. Hey, we're going to, we're going to go to Disney World, right? We're going to stay. We're going to Disney World. This thing is sturdy. Yeah, that was him trying to like get it to break. Could the players respect that we're in the tournament? So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being here. For Doug and Sherman's Tennis Mania. Thanks for watching the best damn tennis show on Twitch. Thank you to the production team for making this the best damn tennis tournament on Twitch. Woo! Yeah, he Thank says it's sturdy because he's specifically to trying to break it. The VOD immediately gets muted because we start Thank playing everybody coffee. For watching. Be sure to follow on Twitch for more tennis action, and we're going to see you guys next time. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> Good timing. Um, oh, wait, I can't even play this right. God damn it. Every time I play coffee on stream, I have to go fucking unmute it on Twitch manually. They can't just, like, whitelist my channel, I guess. Um, anyway, that was the tennis oh, thing. People, people asked about it. I, I am very, very happy with how that worked out. It was the stupidest fucking idea ever. Super impressed with Shuffle Mania and everything oh. you've done recently. Really excited to hear about the process. Yeah, I, and so I, I thought it'd be fun to talk about like what it takes to put all this on. So far, I've just we just talked about specifically tennis, obviously. But um, Hi, yeah, Germ was in the box the whole Usually time. When As you can see, that's where the witness protection changes their hair, changes their name, and disappears. They don't go back to their same job after they come back. Because the switchers went back in to here. Streaming on the channel two months later. Hey, hey, Doug, the criminals are gone now. Who is knows nothing about production? How much of the set was custom built for this show? That's a good question. All right, let's talk about set. Um, so let let's talk about. Okay, I think the alerts are very far behind, by the way. So I would not recommend doing Texas Beach because I assume there's a lot of uh, things queued up. Um, so here, let me actually pull up the like because I thought it'd be interesting to like pull up some of the documents and stuff that I have. Let me pull up some of those. Uh. While I'm doing that, let Doug, me why are you blonde now? I've been blonde for like two months, dude. Because there's all these different elements of putting on a show like this. So set is one of them, right? And it's a fairly large one. Actually, hey, I don't really Doug, have a... If you decide to stream on YouTube and Twitch at the same time, can you give us a button to play ads for the other site? <laughs> let us make okay. more. That's <laughs> that is really funny. That is very, very, very funny. Um, hey, Daddy Doug, what's your opinion on tax fraud? Uh, it's not very poggies. Okay, what, what do I start with? I guess, yeah, I guess we can start with, like, graphics and, um... So, yeah, While graphics and set... mostly YouTube and even pay for premium, it's hard to match the energy and interactions built into Twitch chat. Yeah, 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 I, I agree. Uh, yeah, well, I'll chat about the, um, the YouTube versus Twitch thing later do it having people be able to make the other sides experience Hello, worse plug, plug. is so Long funny time watch your first time fan That's will you do cricket mania next? probably not downy dog thank you for the two years i'm probably not going to do an event like this for a little bit i i just need to i this was a fucking blast and i loved it but i need to did jimma actually stay inside the panel the whole time yeah of course um uh, that's what the toilet paper's for um this is just a lot of work, Jesus, as we'll, we'll kind of talk about. So there's all these different elements of putting on a show like this. I'm just going to start diving into it. So this is more like for people who are curious, like how something like this happens. So initially, it starts with just the idea, right? And the and the initial idea for this <coughs> was, and I might have said this on stream, was just that when Failboat and I did this, Failboat and I played, um, we played Smash Bros with the shuffling thing that I had made, right? Where it swaps every... Uh, you know, randomly every like 10 seconds or so. And so this was initially what I wanted to do for the show. I saw this or, 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 you know, I like made the shuffling program for this and then Failboat and I played and I was like, this is actually really um, like competitive and interesting and fun. And so when I first reached out to Ludwig and Offbrand, like the company who did the production for this, um, it was just, hey, I think it'd be fun to do a turn, like a smash tournament with, where it's swapping, right? Um, 
But then as we were talking about it, not only were there kind of some concerns about Nintendo, because Nintendo has been uh, shutting a lot of people down for all of their stuff recently. Um, so putting on a tournament that looks modded, even though technically this is not modded, this is just save states. Um, but putting on a tournament that looks modded is like a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit risky where they might come after me, which would be bad for my channel. Um, but on top of that, also realize like, okay, if we get a bunch of like players together in a room, Smash Bros is so skill based that if, for example, we had Ludwig and the rest of the other players, like Ludwig would just destroy everybody, right? Because he is way better at Smash Bros. And even with this crazy shuffling thing, it's not going to undo the fact that he's way, way better. <coughs> so... So then I, I was thinking, and this is all like four months ago, maybe, I started talking. It was before I was even planning on moving to L.A. Vermin, thank you, man, for the 12 months. And so um, so then I was like, okay, maybe we, we adjust it. Because Off-Brand also suggested, what if it's like a mix of different, you know, like Doug Doug challenges. Um, so then it was like, wait, what if we... What if we expand it so it's like five different games where it's shuffling between them? So then it would be something like Smash Bros plus Mario Kart plus whatever plus whatever. And I didn't know what those games would be, but the idea would be like, okay, we do a whole bunch of them. So this was like in June or July. I started to look into that and spent like a couple days um, just working. Oh, yeah. I'll like calls it early. A couple days just working, um, testing out different games to see what would be fun for shuffling. So eventually we ended on like Tetris I thought was really fun. Bomberman was fairly interesting mario 64 mario kart basically, basically i picked the ones that i thought were the most interesting but i tested like 20 or 25 games like it was like a lot of work to basically go back and look at every retro game and uh and see if it would be fun for something like this and there were a bunch that i thought would be fun that just weren't like puzzle bobble or pong or i thought like madden could be fun and they just most of them weren't um or they're like fun for they're fun for like 10 seconds and then the novelty wears off, right? <coughs> Dumb guy, thank you for the 12 months, man. So the five I landed on, it was like a lot of iteration on that. One of the ones I wanted to do initially was Tony Hawk Pro Skater, which is really funny to watch them switch between a, a skating game. They're just constantly crashing until like a minute is up and then it's kind of boring. And so there's a, it was finding the right mix of games ended up taking me a long time and i think they ended up pretty good in terms of everything felt fairly interesting and competitive but a couple of them like mario 64 like squeaks just ended up destroying everybody i thought that would be more even um and it was not right and mario kart ludwig was way better than everybody else um so there were a couple where it still ended up being like just a total wash but i spent a lot of time testing different games to try to get stuff that would actually be competitive and interesting over, you know, uh, like 10, 15 minutes of gameplay instead of just one. And so that was like, then it evolved to that. So it was like, okay, now it's going to be like five or six different events. And that was a, a lot of work in several days to get that to, um, to that point. And then it became, um, uh, I was in a call with Jerma. And so he was giving his thoughts on like how the show could work because we're still sort of planning the broad structure of it, right? And his suggestion was, oh, I watched some of the shuffling thing you did, but it's really visually stimulating, right? And so it probably would make sense to have something to break up the shuffling events, right? So instead of just like this kind of crazy visual happening for five straight hours, it's a shuffling event and then something else. And then a shuffling event and then something else. Um, so I was like, okay, that's a really good point. Like we should do that. So that's what the show ended up being, right? There's nine events or whatever. And then uh, where's the list if I can find it? Ended up being nine events, um, so it included things like Peggle. Uh, can I find it here? So it ended up being nine events, so it was shuffling events mixed with bonus events, and then the bonus events were just like, okay, I'll find things that are like, you know, Doug Doug style challenges or whatnot. But these also took a bunch of iteration to land on. Like I had other ones that I thought would be more interesting that I tried, and then those weren't that good. Um, like the Peggle race, this was like the third or fourth thing I tried out and doing it with Twitch chat turned out to be what made it actually fun. Smash Bros. Kirby mode I had from the beginning. Super Mario World blindfolded. I was going to try it with a different game, but then we swapped um, to like a 2D Mario game. And then I initially it was going to be Mario Bros. 1-1, like the original Mario level. And turns out when I was testing it with people, like that was too long and too boring. And so Super Mario World was a lot, a sh lot shorter and a lot easier. So this ended up being better. Uh, Mario Kart with voice commands like that initially I was going to do a different game with voice commands but then did Mario Kart and then that took in terms of how how the commands were set up like various testing with that in terms of how hard or how easy it is to do what level is on all that stuff so 
locking in the actual game. Oh, and then with every single one of these, it's also I'm like testing the code on them and figuring out like, okay, with Smash Bros, what are the stages? With Mario Kart, what are the stages? With Tetris, what game am I doing with Tetris? I tried like four different Tetris games to see which one would work the best and eventually landed on Tetris Generations, I think, or Tetris Party Deluxe because they had a 2v2 mode. Um, Bomberman, like trying different Bomberman games and then even the stages within Bomberman and figuring out how that would work. And again, I was testing this with a bunch of different games. Um, Mario 64, like which levels this would be, which, you know, we tested on stream, like how long the Peggle race would go, what Mario Kart levels, um, like how frequently the shuffling would happen um, during these events, right? Like what are the rules of it? And so uh, getting the final, oh, and then the finale of picking five games that it would shuffle between was also... Like, that took a while to figure out the five games. Like, I tested, like, a, you know, 50 different Mario Party mini games and all this different shit. Hi, Cherry. And I'm really, really happy with the final list of games for this. Like, I think the finale was super hype. Finding a Tetris 2v2 game was super sick. Um, but yeah, this is a lot of the work in terms of, like, the games. It was like, dude, this took a lot. And it was like, after every time I would get a new list of games, I would then go and, like, test them with people for, like, a couple hours. And then <laughs> the setup of this was a while too. So once I once I coded everything, it's like I then needed to set it up in a way that production could set each of the games up, right? And so I, I like also wrote these like guides for Perry, who's a producer, a friend I work with, um, for like what you would do with every single match to set it up. So it's like open Dolphin, reset the save states. You have to copy the files from the save state backup folder that I have into the Dolphin save state folder, which is in like a specific location. Then we run the game to set up the five games. You're hitting F1 to load a specific save state. You have to set up the players to do their chosen characters. This is all after like making sure the controls are all set up before each one. You pick this stage to start the game. When you're ready, you press F1 on the keyboard to save that save state. Then you redo that for F2, F3, F4, F5. Just quickly test that all games are working, going through the save states, pause the game, start the code. So the code is now backed up in this folder with the Python script where it's now ready for you to hit spacebar. Put the game window back in focus, move to the remote PCs, which are off the screen. So like to the side of the set back here ish, Perry is on two PCs that are parsecced into these two PCs so that he can hit spacebar to kick the code off, which will then uh, have them start playing the shuffling match. But then even during the shuffling match, he is sitting there with like looking at what happens so that the instant somebody completes a level, he hits space bar so that it pulls itself out. The code then registers and says, okay, we're pulling that one out of the pool of, le of levels that are left. Um, on top of the graphics team, like also while they're watching it, updating the scores as each team like gets one point or whatnot. So I was like, yeah, actually running the video games is a lot more than just like, all right, boot up Smash Bros. Melee. It's like we had to do this for, I mean, this is 16 pages of notes. This is just for one role in this show um, to get everything set up. And every single game had different weird quirks. Okay, here's a weird quirk. Tetris. You can't just reset Tetris every time. You can't, like, so let's say I have five save states, which are the five Tetris games that they're going to play, okay? So if they're playing Tetris. Um, I can't just reset to the... If I set up five games of Tetris in advance, right? And then they're playing five games of Tetris and it's bouncing back and forth between them. Um, the first match ends between Will Neff and Alpharad, okay? And then we're going to the That's next one. In the uh, thank you, Princess Nari. Thank you. Uh, between Failboat and Squeaks. I can't just reset to those same five games because it's going to be the same shapes that come out, right? It's the same order. Um, and so basically you need it to generate a new random seed for every for every single match, right? And so this game, for some reason, the random seed is set when you start the game. And so to like we couldn't get five different random seeds and all of the matches were exactly the same blocks. And so we had to then... It turns out if you go into the game and then you hit retry, that'll reset it with a new seed, but it'll still be the same. So we had to basically do retry in Tetris 15 different times to get 15 different games of Tetris that would actually be different and then save those save states separately in different folders that we would then copy in for each one of the matches. So like, and then every game just had weird shit like this. Like Super Mario World Blindfolded just had weird shit where the controller would have issues. Bomberman was just simple. Smash Bros. Don't touch, don't touch Kirby was fine. Mario 64, this, 
this emulator had weird fucking problems where you had to unbind every single controller button and then rebind it every time you unplugged or replugged a controller in plus loading and the save states is all different um god the peggle race had weird shit with like pausing and unpausing the game with spacebar and starting uh <coughs> and then uh and then starting the game yeah we're using project 64 for that um yeah, it, just a lot of the games had like weird quirks that we had to deal with. For the finale of having five games being played at once, it's five different dolphin instances. And then my code is like bringing one of them to the forefront every single time and pausing the other four instances of dolphin. So in the finale, it's like a totally different setup because it's five different games that we're loading between. Um, and it's just like a different setup in case in all of these I have like a backup plan if something goes wrong Oh also backup games that if any one of these break during it So I had like I was also testing backup games that were like ready to go that we could jump over to if something started like breaking with Mario 64 So the actual game setup was just like it was just a lot man. I'm trying to think of like what else uh, final games and rules Yeah, I did like Like with each of the games, I did all these tests um, and backups of it and then would like write these notes about what is happening. Um, and it's like, OK, how do we reset save states with? OK, like the Wii version is really small. Like maybe we should consider this version. Um, and so I was like writing and doing notes about all this stuff on and on and on. Um, that was a lot of stuff. That's the actual games. I'm trying to think if there's anything else there with like the game. So in terms of planning this event, what started as, hey, it'd be fun to do a little a uh, little uh, Smash Bros thing, like grew and grew and grew to where, as you can tell from everything I've been describing, I I'm really happy with how the actual gameplay turned out at the end, but it was a ton of work for to get it to that point. And I think it was like quite good in terms of the games being entertaining, but it was it, it was a lot, man, to, to actually get to the final list with all the final rules, all the final code, all the final process. I meant in your Battle Royale video, you didn't think oh, these are really far behind. Royale round. I was wondering why the best moment of the year wasn't even played. Ladies and gentlemen, no, it's, it's time, ads. time for ads! Classic scope creep. Hey, yeah, it was kind of scope creep. toilet paper Jonah had? Can <laughs> I have it for reasons? Uh, I'll ask him. He might have taken it home. I'm not sure. Uh, enjoy the ads, everybody. All right, that's the gameplay. <laughs> Let's talk about that. How do you Is set up like I a set like this? Let's just take the whenever I try to sleep in the new basement, the ball wall room. Uh, there is going to be banging coming from the ball wall room. Yeah, Cyril, thank you so much for the twenty gifted subs, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, you're I think funding my sandwich sub, so thank you for that too. What was that? Oh, Doug, star. Thank tennis you. Tennis works for you since you're a ten tenth guy. Heart. Is that a pun? I don't Hi, get Douglas, it. Douglas, congrats on your show, but you didn't have to attack the habitat for horn players so viciously. I think someone fractured a trombone. Habitat for horn players? I don't get it. A 10 out of 10... 10 out of 10 guy? I don't Thank get it. Thank you for giving Jim a free reign for his best soundboard bit. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the drama. Uh, there was so much drama. Uh, boy, just stick around until we get to the drama. There's no way you just stuffed Gemma into a box for four and a half hours, right? Poor guy. Look, he, he's so he is the C, he's the chief creative officer of Off Brand, and basically what that means, if you're a creator considering working with Off Brand, you basically just get he's just like an unpaid intern that you can do whatever you want with. Like he's legal. The instant you sign a contract with him, he's legally obligated to do whatever Jesus, you want. Jesus, take so the wheel. I signed the contract and I pointed at the box and I said, "Get in." Get in! And and then a couple weeks later, we finally let him, let him out. Crack a chan, thank you so much for the uh, five gifted subs, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay, let's talk about designing, like, the whole weird other shit in the show. Because that was the game, and that's, like, how it started. And that just kept growing, right? Um, so in terms of a set like this, often what you'll do when you, when you design a, a show set like this is that you will reuse parts of previous shows, right? Um, and this is just... Like as a set designer, you're you're often going to try to be like, okay, what stuff do we have around? Can we incorporate that but have it remixed? So parts of this are from previous off-brand shows, like some of the background panels, I think. I don't know exactly what, but a lot of this is custom made. So for example, this whole, um, the shuffler itself as like this, you know, robot entity. Um, when we started talking about what the show would be, 
Um, so as it was growing, right, from, okay, we're just, we were just going to play Smash Bros. Now we're doing all these different games. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do, to instead of just, instead of just like, oh, I wrote all the code, we have like a big entity. And we are, we are like treating the entity as this like, you know, deity, like this demigod thing, which is, contr is controlling what's going on in the show. Um, so that's where this concept came from. Initially, the design, um, cause the, the, the production set designer from off brand is very, very good. Um, initially, so he designed it as more of like a, like an altar kind of, and then I had the idea to make it more game related. So, um, I think I was like, Can we make it more video game, uh, video game themed instead of just like an altar. And I think he suggested like, like a dreamcast controller look. So that's how we ended up with this look. So this was, um, we conceptualized it together and then basically the the production set designer that Offbrand works with just put this all together and like had the idea of all the different screens on it with different stuff happening during it, which I think was awesome. Um, so that sort of evolved and that was like a key focus of the set. But then we would, we talked about how in the background we would make it a sort of like laboratory vibe, right? Um, and so that's where the lights coming in, like these monitors just like playing a movie in the background the whole time with like piping coming out of it. Um, we talked about how we like wanted to be like kind of clean, but then as things go on, it would start to deteriorate a little bit, which I was like, oh, that's perfect because that fits with, uh, you know, like these bits where we start to like mess with the actual, with the actual like walls and stuff. Um, I was like, that's perfect because it's funny and it kind of fits with like my vibe, right? Of things kind of go wrong <laughs> like half the time. Um, we actually, I don't know if we did it. That was another thing I coded. <laughs> Um, on their, was, were there lights happening in the background during the, sh during the game ending? I don't think there was. Um, so like lighting was another thing where, so with a show like this, you'll generally have either like a DP, director of photography or lighting director or both, um, who's responsible for like setting up the lights of the set, but also specific light cues. So, like, you know, before we get into a game, I will, you know, slam this thing and be like, all right, we're well, shuffling begins and they'll do a lighting cue that like shows a whole bunch of stuff happening visually. We also had a program that we tested, but I don't think went into the final thing where my code, when it would, um, when we would swap to a new, or when one of the games would finish and you'd hit space bar, that it would then, uh, through a TCP uh, socket, send a message of what game just finished and what slot we're now on um, to some code that the engineering team made, which would then trigger lighting stuff. And I, I forget, uh, or I'm not sure how much of that ended up being incorporated, but that was another thing with like lighting and whatnot with the set where we were we were like putting these pieces together. Um, but yeah, so the, the set design is basically, you have a general concept, you make like a mood board with a bunch of different pictures of like, you know, movies and TV shows and art that like inspires you. And then that gives the general direction. And then you start making these like 3D renders and we got into like, okay, what does this specific shuffler thing look like? And then, from that point, they basically just put it together. Like the, they just did a fantastic job with the set design, and everything. Like all these cool pipes and stuff in the background, and having Twitch chat in the monitors in the background was all just like super sick. And then as well, like throughout the show, there are these bits where like smoke starts coming out of the wall and whatnot, and they set all that up. Um, the shuffler itself kind of evolved. So basically, it started as I want to do an event where the games are shuffling, and then it was I think where there should be like an entity on the set that is supposedly responsible for the shuffling and we all are like kind of like worshiping or whatnot. And then it was like, okay, why don't we make it more video game related? Um, and then it was like, okay, you know, it'd be funny is if at the very end, Germa like popped out like the Wizard of Oz. So that was all it was at the beginning for the first couple months. And then it became, wait, what if Germa could like talk as the thing during the show? <laughs> And so we're like, oh, that would be really funny. Like, we'd, you know, give him a microphone and then like during the show, you know, he can talk as the shuffler thing. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. Here, I'm here. It is also well, Neff. <gasps> birthday. No! Oh, 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 Happy birthday, Will. Um, so so initially it was like, it'll just be this like, you know, it'll just be this fancy altar thing on stage that we like talk about as being responsible for everything. And then it was like, what if Germa pops out at the end as like the Wizard of Oz? <laughs> I don't remember how that came up. And then it was, okay, well, what, he could actually talk as it during the thing. That could be funny. Like he has a voice and he can talk at it. And then I forget how it came up. We thought the idea of, the, of giving him a soundboard. 
So instead of him just talking, that he has a soundboard. So in the background, in the production room, I didn't get a picture of this. I know there's a video somewhere. Drama was like in this fucking like comic book hacker situation with eight stream decks in front of him. So like eight of these with all these buttons that had like 150 different lines that he recorded in advance. And he was just sitting there like poking around like a telephone operator. Like he literally was sitting back there like this the whole time pressing buttons and then occasionally would like open his mic and be like, you know, I am going to, you know, shit inside you. Like, and he would do this mix. So it was mostly... <laughs> it was mostly him on a soundboard, but then he would add in more and more of his own voice on a microphone. So it was like this incredibly. And then we, you know, he talked about how he wanted to start and we would like, we, we tested this in rehearsal and whatnot. He would start as really dumb. Like when we first introduce him, he can only say a few words. And then as it goes on, he'll get more and more like he's just talking and just learning a lot. And so we were building the story of that of like, okay, we could pretend that like it's an AI that is learning off of what everybody's saying that that would be pretty funny. So, and then the per, like the production team put together this thing where I didn't I didn't ask for this or anything. It was entirely on them of there would be like a visual for Germa's voice which and they added not only that when he talks the line goes Yeah, this, like when he's talking. Not only that, I gave I sent over all the cartoon eyes um that that I used for like my bell pepper and everything. They hooked it up so Germa had a stream deck that was just for cartoon eyes. So he was able to change the emotion of his eyes whenever we were talking to him. Is it Ludwig's birthday? Um, and that's why like during the movies and stuff, he would be able to. Okay. Yeah, like when we're asked like, is it Ludwig's birthday? And he's like, is it Ludwig's birthday? Processing. <laughs> like he makes him look like thoughtful, you know. It is not. Yeah, so we, we talked about some of the things we want to do in advance, like it just him saying it's everybody's birthday or using like certain lines incorrectly over and over. And when he was first using the soundboard, he had the line um, squeaks shit inside me. And I was just like crying, laughing. And so I was like, please do that during the show. But a lot of it, a lot of what the shuffler said during the show is just Germa improv. It's Germa with like 200 soundboard lines on a stream deck combined with him talking into all of the, all of which goes into a voice modulator and then is piped out of this thing. And then we're just like interacting with it randomly during the show. It was awesome. It was like the best part, honestly, is Germa being this crazy robot that we are all talking to and gets crazier and crazier as time goes on. Oh yeah. And then, and then like with the movie section, so for people who didn't see, we had initially, I was like, okay, we have to have a break or two for production. And I was like, okay, we can just go to a five-minute break. Normally with a show like this, you just go to a screen that says, like, returning in five minutes or whatnot. And instead... Module. Oh. Uh, movie. Movie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> to, no, I... Hold on. I, we got to fix this. I, I, what I'm thinking, Shuffler, I'll activate the movie module. Oh. Uh, movie. Movie. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So yes. movie yes. movie module movie. is So these are like these are mostly Germa's pre-recorded lines, but he'll occasionally drop in other lines. Uh Shuffler, can you activate one of the movies? Because we got some old copyright free ones that I added into the, oh, cool. the training data. Magnificent. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's do this for a few minutes while I do some debugging and then we will get back into it. Shuffler, movie. whenever you're ready. Activating movie sequence in three, two, one. Go. Hum. And then we just have a five-minute clip of an old-ass movie. <laughs> old-ass movie. Well, Germa, Germa didn't take a break, by the way. <laughs> he, I think he took a break during one of the games because during the actual breaks, he was just commenting on the movies. <coughs> Great. Important. Great. Yeah, so these are definitely all soundboard, like pre-recorded. So, initially, we were just going to go to a break. Movie. Oh, yeah. I, wait, that was the... I, I love. love movie. So, initially, we were just going to go to a break, right? And then, in one of the calls, Jeremo was like, you know, you could do... I don't even know if it was in the context of a break, but he was like, yeah, you could just, like, throw up some, like, copyright-free movies, because he's done that as a stream, where he just watches these really old copyright-free movies. 
um, which is just like, you know, a very like Germa thing. And, uh, and I was like, oh, that's hilarious. Like, it'd be really funny if we just like went to a movie instead of a break. Like Twitch chat would love that, obviously. Um, so that was the idea. And then, and then it became, we were like, okay, how do we make it a little more thematic? And I thought it'd be funny if like, we, so we got that huge remote for me that I used to go to the ad or to go to the break. And I was like, oh, it'd be funny if like I, I use a huge remote and I'm like, hey guys, I'm going to change the channel. So I'm like, we're going to go to a break, but I'm going to change the channel to a movie. And I like hit the thing. Um, and then like a couple days before the show or like the day, because we were, we were like evolving how everything would like act uh, leading up to the show and like literally the day before morning of and stuff. Um, so then we were like, okay, what would be, um, maybe it makes more sense of like, I, there's like a problem I need to fix and that's why I'm going to the movie. So it like makes a little more sense, you know, thematically of what's going on. Um, and then, and then Jeremy was like, oh, I could just like, what if the shuffler is talking during the movie? Like the shuffler is actually commentating during the whole movie. And I was like, oh, that's hilarious. And then, and then it was like the day before I was like, wait, what if we come back and you want to keep watching the movie and I want to like stop you from watching the movie. And so he's like, oh, that's great. So then it evolved to the shuffler is just wants to watch movies. And then I am stopping him from watching movies. And so then as it ends. How long was this? I was using the bathroom during this. I did not watch it. Hey. Okay, we are back. Good news. Check the wires. Uh, no more issues with Shuffler. AI is working correctly. We are good to get into our next event. Angry. Angry. Uh, what, what, Angry. Why? What's up? Shuffler? We want movie. No. So we, we, we got to go. gotta continue with the tournaments. We have to, there's going to be like a grand prize reveal at the end, you know? So we're gonna continue. We want movie. Uh, Shuffler, you do not have access to the movies. So. so we thought it'd be funny here is that I'm like, you don't have access to the movie module. So then we play it up so that later on when something breaks, he gets full control and then he forces the movie to start. And then I have to like manually rip the, the module out of the wall in order. I think me ripping it out of the wall was like the morning of. We were like, oh, we'll come back. And then I'm like fighting with you about whether or not you're playing the movie. And I was like, oh, wait, if we come back, I could be like pulling out the wall or whatnot. Where's the second movie? Uh, why is it hard to find this? The movie is like a giant. Okay, yeah. So during the second movie, we do the bit of like, this movie. he gets <laughs> like full control. Again. Remember, we've talked about this. This is a huge opportunity for the finalists. We got to get to the end of the tournament. My opportunity right now. His movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, he loves movies. Yeah, he's, he's he, he wants the movies. Head. I'm gonna go yeah. try to oh, fix Roll the movies. One in sec. Three, no, no, no. Shuffler, two, hold on. One movie mode activated. <laughs> so the idea that he is like stopping the tournament from happening because the shuffler just wants to watch movies is so fucking funny. Um. Come on, giant. Oh, also, when I looked at the when I looked at the Twitch analytics for this stream, wait, maybe I can even pull it up. Let me see. I need to like not show. Oh wait, no, I can pull it up over here. I think here, you guys can watch the movie. movie. What movie? Mr. Oh, his name was actually Dinklepuss. I didn't know what the hell he got. Season control. Not anymore. We will be afraid. In control. Follow me. This is the average. Okay. This is the viewership for the stream, right? So you can see it like goes up to, you know, is 17, 18K or whatever and stays there most of the time. And then there's just these two bars which jump up. <laughs> this is the movie section. So like the Jesus, peak, the the peak of, the, of the stream is this fucking movie, uh, which is so funny. Uh, sorry, I missed somebody. I've picked up plenty of things from chat this afternoon. That's the giant, by the way. Just a taller. Some people wanted to know what the movies were. Okay, the movies are Indestructible Man and Jack and the Beanstalk for people who want to actually go watch these movies. Um, but yeah, like, it, like obviously, everybody in chat was just going to be obsessed with movies. Like, we knew that this was going to be the case. And so initially, it was just like, oh, that'll be funny. But then the idea that, like, the Shuffler bot also is obsessed with movies and is doing everything he can to just watch movies is so fucking funny. Uh, Wait a minute. Mr. Dinklepuss. Movie. How come your shadow is in mine? Well, like all it all it takes is him to say I love movie, but I heard him say that like two hundred times in the couple days, like over the course of of the of us all being in the studio. So like over the last week, my brain will just rant anytime any movie is brought up. My brain is just like I love 
movie. Like the way he says movie is just like so just got stuck in my brain. You see, that's the basic principle of mathematics. Oh, and so then during this, because we were setting up the return bit, he was occasionally like, no, no, don't, don't touch those wires. Like during this movie. I am shorter than you. Therefore, my shadow should be smaller than yours. Mathematically speaking, right? Don't, right, don't, why? don't. Leave wires sure alone. I was making a fool out of your mathematics. Yeah. So then he's like teasing that I'm fucking with the wires. I am actually peeing at this point. I didn't see any of this. Okay, so then so then we cut back. Instead of just cutting back to like me being like, alright, the break's over. It's like you get here before me. I made a new path through the forest. Did you see what I saw? Ow, 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 ow. As big as don't, don't, no! Do not stop stop! Stop pressing buttons! No. Not for it. It's for your own good. We have to continue no. the tournament. I need to deactivate the no. movie module. No. I think it's here. Don't stand there with your mouth wide right open. We want something. movie. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. Help. Help. Get in there. That works. No. Stop. No. Okay. Oh, oh, it's no. out. No. It's no. out. There's no more movies. The movie module <laughs> is not here. I also cut my finger here, so I just start like bleeding all over the thing. <laughs> Shuffler, we've got to keep going. Are you doing oh, 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 You're ruining God. the birthday module. Oh, the birthday. Okay. Shuffler? Birthday. Error. Sh birthday. Sh Shuffler. Error. Okay. Shuffler, I believe we're all good. You're fixed now. And we can move on to your favorite event, Super Mario 64. <gasps> Woo! Super Mario. Shuffler. <laughs> Shuffler's going to be awesome. You know how Squeaks plays Super Mario 64? Yeah? Uh, I love the whole Shuffler bit. So, I thought it, was, it would be kind of fun to share, like, it it went so far from like the initial concept of, Oh, it'd be cool to have like a thing on stage that um, like a thing on stage that we kind of is say is doing the code to like, Oh, what if it's more of a character? Oh, what if Germa pops out at the end? Oh, what if Germa's talking during it? Oh, what if Germa has a face? Oh, what if like he wants certain things and he like evolves over time? Oh, what if we like do these bits back and forth? Like it just, in terms of like what the actual look of it was, it all just like evolved a lot over the course of, uh, of, you know, the couple months that we were doing this. Hey Doug, due to your two month vacation I started having dreams with you in it. You seemed to roll your eyes every time I made a joke while watching a movie. That movie. wasn't very nice. Nah JK. That's my bad. Um, I'm trying to think. What else? Hey Doug, what else? My one year sub was literally on the day of the tennis mania. Thanks so for the one year. Sad. Also, I'm allergic to nuts. Peanuts. Got him. Uh, that it sort of got me. Um... Maybe we will watch one of those copyright-free hey, movies at some point down the road. Bot sound we need him to live on. I speak on chat's behalf. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't. I don't have all the sounds because they were going through a voice modulator live. So I don't. I don't have the sounds. I technically have Germa talking for like two. I mean, I have. I would really love a deep dive into how you set up the interface with Llama LLM. Yeah, that wasn't exactly <laughs> true. <laughs> um. What, one one funny side thing is that like I just as a general note, I do not want to lean too heavily on AI. Just in general, I kind of feel like it's a cheat code, and that I could probably for th six straight months just make Chat GPT funny characters that I talk to and you guys talk to, and it's like Napoleon and Bjorn the Unicorn guy and whatever else, um, Pajama Sam. I just, I feel like it's kind of over, I, I don't want to overuse it, and I want to make sure I'm doing other things as well. So I'm trying to maintain a 50-50 balance of YouTube videos, at least, that are AI-based versus not AI-based. That That is roughly what I'm trying to do. Because I'm, I'm certainly capable of coming up with non-AI things, and it's tempting because most of the new ideas I have nowadays are like, oh, we could add this AI character into RimWorld, and he says what to do, and it's like, fuck. Um, uh, the AI videos are, and streams are like the most popular right now, but... Um, yeah, I'm just I, I just am more interested in having there be variety. So it's not like it's not like there's some law that I need to follow here, but I just generally want to try to maintain like roughly 50 50. Um, I just don't want to rely on it too much. So anyway, part of that I thought would be really funny. I thought it was funny the idea that like this show would start and I would tell everybody that it was all AI based and there's no AI in this show. <laughs> but I thought that was funny because I'm starting to see a couple YouTube comments here and there that it's like. I wish Doug would stop doing so much AI stuff. Like, I'm getting a little tired of the AI characters. So this to me is really funny that, like, those people maybe tuned in. They're like, oh, another AI thing and clicked off. And it's just Germa, like, clicking buttons. Like, the least AI thing possible. Um, anyway, I thought that was funny. Anything else with the set that you guys are curious about? 
I'm trying to think of other categories. Run of show is maybe interesting to people. But I've talked about how kind of like a lot of the bits, like we had like calls to talk about like props and uh, and like how we would incorporate, you know, like having them all wear colored lab coats was like Jerm and I just literally brainstorming prop ideas and then pull, pulling it up on uh, Amazon. If I get the video of Jerma doing the buttons, I'll, I'll tell you guys. What else did Jerma do in the box? He, a lot of defecation. Um, why did you pick Super Mario 64? I thought it would be genuinely competitive because I thought that Alpha Rad speed ran Mario 64, Stans does, Ludwig does, Squeaks does, and then I thought Failboat had a little bit. So I thought Mario 64 would be a lot more competitive than it was. It was not competitive at all. So that that I missed. What did the fog juice taste like? The bot the breakable bottles. Yeah, when did this happen? I don't remember when the bottles were broken. I think it was around here. Focus on, um, why don't we go back to, oh, uh, okay, activate the, activate the comedy module. Comedy module. Shuffler, tell us a joke. Okay, so you got two guys walking to a bar. One guy ducks. <laughs> so as you can tell, this is just open and no longer soundboard. Uh, Shuffler, can you tell us like, a joke about, like, pie? Three point one four. <laughs> ah, that's good. That's good. That was good. Wait, wait, wait. What? What? What's up? I have a joke. Okay. Yeah, let's hear it. Ludwig, could you please zero one zero 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 one zero one zero one one zero zero zero. This is actually binary for one 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 zero one zero 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 one zero 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 one. Eat my ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All yeah, right. and the comedy module does not miss. Come it doesn't on. miss. Why did you turn this thing on earlier? Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah I totally drink, forgot buddy. about Oh, okay. Well, oh, how many more of those do you have? I got a lot of IPAs. So it turns out you can buy for about $20 each uh, bottles that you can just break. So uh, that was like $100 of just buying bottles that <laughs> we were just like throwing around. Two of them, one of them I broke while testing it because they're so, they're so fragile. And I like held it up. Um, I held it up and I was just like, oh, okay. So it's just kind of like a normal bottle. I can even squeeze a little bit and squeezed it with like medium fucking strength. And it just shatters. Like they're really, really, really sensitive. Uh, but you can just throw them at things. So we had like three or four of those break on set. How much did all this cost in general? I don't know how much. Uh, let's just say a show like this costs... I don't want to give like exact numbers too. And also the tennis bit added like seven thousand dollars. <laughs> I was like, that that one joke was a very expensive joke. <laughs> so I'll be doing a couple sponsorships. <laughs> um which is worth it, to be clear. Uh yeah, because you're talking about a lot of extra production, lights, staff to deal with that, renting equipment, renting all the stuff. And at that point I was already a lot I, you know, I'd spent a lot of money at that point. I was like, all right, may as well go all the way. Here's what I'll say. A show like this, you can expect to run between fifty and $100,000. Um, and this was not cheap. Yeah. Yeah, a couple people have the general range of it. It depends a lot. So, like, set, building the set is going to be a big part of what costs a lot of money. Um, I think they were, they were quite efficient with it, but we still went pretty hard on the set, as you can probably tell. Like, a lot of this is custom-made stuff, which takes a lot of people and rented equipment and purchasing... Things like this is this is like a custom made wooden thing with all these equipment and things. Um, uh, you have a lot of people running a, a show like this. So in the control room, you're going to have like six, seven people running it, which are the technical director who presses all the buttons. Um, A1, the audio director, uh, the producer or director, whoever's calling the actual shots, um, engineer in chief. A Jerma to make funny noises, uh, graphics operator to update the graphics and and all that, lighting director, and then you also have people around the actual set. So you're gonna have PAs to help change things out or uh, A twos like people help Wix changing out like microphones and audio packs and changing setting up a uh, uh, you know different um, equipment as needed throughout the set. You're gonna have a can we had a camera operator for the jib. So a jib is a big like crane camera that moves around. So we didn't use it a ton, but we did have that as well as somebody for the mobile cam operator 
operator just at the end for the tennis thing. So we had to like get a person just for that. Um, yeah, my friend Perry, who was running, like, setting up the actual games in a more tournament set of, setup. You do a bunch of, uh, um, like, you know, admins. Like, people to just manage. That. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. It's time for ads. Yeah, somebody said, so events are run at a loss. N not only are events run at a loss, that is an understatement. They are run at a gigantic loss. That being said... I am in a very fortunate position now where I can make a lot of money off of sponsors. So thank you to the lovely sponsors who I've been working with recently, like City Skylines and uh, Asus. I'm doing something with soon. So I can fund it, but this is this was, you know, this is not a profitable thing. I am going to lose a absolutely absurd amount of money on this, basically. Um, and then, you know, for me, the reason to do this, the primary reason is... Um, I thought it'd be fun to like do a project with other people. And it was, it was great. Like I, so getting to work with the production team was really fun. Um, why are subs getting ads? Subs do not get ads. They're probably just, they just want to be involved <laughs> with the ads. Um, yeah, like, so something like this, I really wanted to connect with production people now that I'm like in LA, uh, as well as like have uh, an excuse to bring a bunch of friends together. Getting to work with Jerma was incredibly fun. Um, Jerma is like one of my favorite content creators who I admire a ton. So like getting having him be like part of the core team was incredibly, incredibly fun. Uh, yeah, so th this was like a uh, extremely, uh, I don't know. It's just it's just a passion project that I it costs a lot. Mapsy Packs, thank you, man. Would you do it again? Yes. So so again, I, I think that so I, yeah, sure. So this is a good time to talk about like would I do this again? The way this ended up was that this was like a kind of me trying to design a Doug stream, but super up produced, right? And I think like all the bits, all the craziness, like the 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 actual like coding and the gameplay setup, like it was basically me trying to make a Doug Doug stream as big as I possibly Jesus could, right? Deal. And so as a result of that, like I was very involved with all the details of it. That guy, think of the two gifted subs. So as an example, I picked the whole soundtrack and I picked where certain music is being played and when it cuts off, you know, I, I like did all of the, like pig, figuring all of the games, all of the code, all of that, setting up the guides, um, the actual run of show. So a run of show is, it basically is a document describing how the show flows from top to bottom, right? So like as the show opens, what are you seeing? What's happening? Who's saying what? What music is playing? What graphics are playing? So this is the run of show I made and wrote up and this is 45 pages. Um, and so this is like, okay, here's the pre-roll. Then we're fading in on me. This is like my introduction. I wrote like a kind of script for myself. Not that I actually read the script. Although I think with the intro, I basically read this word for word. Um, but it was more like for myself of like, okay, what am I approximately going to be saying at each section? So that's like, okay, we're introducing the teams. It's like, okay, we're playing team X, team Y, uh, productions, be playing sounds. How are you feeling? We're getting response from the players. We're introducing the, the format. And then we're talking about graphics. And then we get into the games. It's like, okay, I'm moving to the couch. We're talking to the players there. I'm queuing them. Meanwhile, the players are getting ready. Once I get the cue from production, I move to the, you know, to the shuffling thing. We activate this. The players answer. I queue it off. I pull the shuffler switch. They're playing applause as the match ends. And like, there's various versions of this. This isn't the, um, this isn't the production version for people who do live broadcasts, like an actual run of show is a little more, it looks more like an, it's an Excel spreadsheet and it's more technical. This is like the high level creative kind of vision of it. Um, but you, you know, you can see like, I, you know, picking the songs and, and everything. Like I, I had a very, very strong hand in deciding like how the core things feel. Right. And um, pretty much every decision, like every creative decision I was ultimately finalizing or at least having input in, even though the team, was awesome, right? Like Jerma added a ton, the whole production team added a ton, like the set design was amazing and the, the flow of it and all that, right? So it's not like I literally did everything. The production team did a ton, but I was involved with every single creative decision and for the actual tournament itself, like it was literally all of it. So with all that being said, that's why this took like three months of time and why I haven't been streaming very much, right? This, this has probably taken like 30 to 40 to 50 days of my time, right? In terms of like me putting effort into all this stuff. I'm trying to think of there's other pieces. There's also, it's like, we made a trailer for it. Like Barry and I worked on a trailer together and like he and I had to talk about that and edit that and record that for, for like um, Twitter and whatnot. And even just write out, okay, here's what the stream title is going to be. Here's what the stream description and for YouTube. And here's what I'm going to tweet and do community posts and all that shit. Um, 
oh, I wrote like a guide for the players. So like for myself to me, me describing to the players like, hey, here's the kind of tone of what I'm trying to do. I think we should treat this as genuinely important. You actually care about it rather than you guys as the players treating it as a total joke. You know, it's like we're trying to emphasizing to them, like talking a lot of shit with, you know, like having it be very loose. Krellin, thank you so much for the one year rather than it being like an esports type things. Here's here's how the playing games will work. You guys will have a mic here. So, you know, in terms of even like how the players are aware of what's going on, like all the all the bits, you know, there was like a lot of, you know, we we when deciding all the jokes and stuff, it was a lot of just kind of open brainstorm and then it got finalized more and more over time. So that's all to say that the way this show happened to develop was very, very involved with me, right? Um, this was very much like a Doug Doug production. Um, I want to do more streams like this, but I want to do them in a way that is more delegated, right? Where it is not me leading it and it's like my show and instead it is more of a group of people putting it on. Maybe it's me and one other person, right? Um, and then it's, you know, our show or whatnot. And then I think the other piece is like, um, yeah, having the, the, the details of how the competition or event plays out not be decided by me as well. So like, I think it'd be interesting to do uh, like a, a courtroom stream with Twitch chat as an example. And I think that um, that it's very possible to do that in a way where I like finalize the core concept and some of the rough ideas, but then the production team and, you know, the creative folks as part of the production team take it most of the rest of the way, if that makes sense. Um, whereas this one, it just happened to be like, this is, you know, a show that I am sort of building from the ground up. Um, so I want to do more stuff like this. I really had fun with it. It was very stressful, frankly, like leading up to it. I, this was kind of overwhelming at times. Um, in particular, cause I was like, I, I had to think about all the games and the code and the setup and like, and hosting it, which is the first time I've done something like that. Right. Uh, but I had so much fun during the actual show itself. I think the players had a really good time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. Um, and so I want to do more stuff like this. I just need to redesign it in a way that it's not like this insanely involved thing for me because I don't want to do another, I don't want to have another two or three month period where I like barely have time to stream. Like it, it's been really, 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 really intense the past three months and it's been good and I accomplished a lot. And now I'm like finally fully moved into LA and out of Washington. And I did all these conventions and all this other shit. Uh, and I'm really proud of this event. I'm like super happy to have done it, but I, I need to figure out a way where it's not like Doug is, you know, doing every single piece of it. So yes, I want to do more shows. This was really good to do. I just need to figure out, uh, I just need to design it differently. If that makes sense. This is a once a year kind of thing. I mean, again, it's not about delegating. Um, like somebody said, you need to delegate more. I So, you know, I could have delegated more. I could have said, hey, I'm not going to be involved with the soundtrack as an example. But for it to really feel like a Doug stream in the way that I would want it to feel like, I need to be involved with the soundtrack. That's like a super core part of what's going on. Um, so there was only so much that could be delegated without me, without it not feeling like a stream that I would design, right? And so, again, that's what I mean. Like this show happened to end up in a way where it was it was like a Doug driven, it was like Doug's creative vision as a giant show. And I would just want it to feel different than that of like, hey, here's an interesting concept that I'm a part of rather than a giant Doug Doug stream, which hopefully makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was very cool to do. I'm very proud of it, but I, I want to be able to stream and do YouTube and stuff casually. Also, it's not financially feasible for me to, uh, <laughs> to just do shows like this because again, they lose so much money. Um, I mean, we could have gotten a sponsor for it and then, or multiple sponsors. And then for future shows like this, it'll be a lot Jesus easier. The wheel. Uh, Kinchel, thank you for the 25 gifted subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is a ton. Um, appreciate it, Kinchel. Um, yeah, so for, for future shows like this, it will be a lot easier to get uh, sponsors because now I can point to a thing like this and be like, look, this was a real show. Here it is. This many people watched. This many people saw it on YouTube. Um, you know, we had this kind of production. So going to a sponsor and saying like, hey, do you want to be involved with a show like this? It's a lot easier once you have an actual thing that you've done, right? Whereas uh, when we were asking sponsors if they wanted to be a part of this, um, like my, my agent, they pretty much all were like, we're interested to be in the YouTube video. Like for brands, they were just like, look, you have a lot of views on YouTube. We want those YouTube views. We don't really care if it's part of this show, right? So they did not care 
a, the, the sponsors didn't really care about this. They just wanted to be involved with the Doug Doug brand, right? Um, so being able to do an event like this that is uh, ideally profitable, but at least not losing shitloads of money, um, I think is much more feasible now because of this. But again, at the same time, I'm in the funny fantasy world uh, of life where I can do sponsorships and just make uh, a lot of money. So I, I can fund things like this through YouTube sponsorships and Twitch sponsorships. Um, and I'm perfectly, I am personally okay with Jesus, just being like, wheel. I'll just waste a shitload of money on these events. Like, I, I don't, I'm cool with that. But, um, but there is, you know, if I, if I were to do these frequently, uh, you know, and do them a lot, then I really need to consider finances. I cannot just drop tens or a hundred thousand dollars casually on a regular basis. Right. Um, Timo, thank you so much for the 20 gifted subs, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, these are these are really, really, really expensive. These these types of productions, it, it's crazy. Um, uh, I wish they weren't, but and then if you if you see like the behind the scenes, like you get it. There's a lot going on, and hopefully, like even with just the set and stuff, you know, I, I think hopefully it makes some degree of sense of like why this took a lot of money and time and effort. But there's like there's like 25 people or something behind set right now, like running this. It's it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of people who are involved with it. Yeah, it would have been cool to do some BTS type stuff, actually. Yeah, I will not release a behind the scenes video. I did not have uh, the time to do that. I this this, this is all this is all I got. Uh, this, it, it was more than enough for me for a while. Why can't you rip Velcro trousers off? You'd make a terrible stripper. I pulled them from the wrong place. Hi, I know this was a lot of time oh. and effort for you, but it was really fun to watch. Thank I'm you. Super proud of you. Thank you. Purple heart. Yeah, I'm really proud with how it came out. Um, there is a lot of this that could have gone badly. <laughs> like, there's a lot that could have gone badly. Um, hey, Doug, I'm sorry to say, but I've been cheating on Squeaks with Kja. How dare you? Go to Squeaks and come clean and make an apology. How did you choose the contestants? I just picked people who were friends who I thought would be fun. Um, there was some degree of... Hello, Douglas. Um, this is your CVS pharmacy. We accidentally swapped point crow's ibuprofen with meth. That explains Please things. Please watch out for odd behavior and don't let him near any randomizers. <laughs> Oops. Um, part of this is just, you know, friends. Part of it was cost. Uh, there's people who I would have loved to invite, but because I had to pay for everybody's flights and hotels, which is another thing that costs money, by the way. Um, you know, I basically I was like, okay, I am already spending an absolutely insane amount of money on this. <laughs> Inviting this player means I have to pay another like two, three, four, five thousand dollars for them to get here from the East Coast or whatever. So a couple people traveled here, I think Failboat and Squeaks. And truth is, that was part of the factor in picking the other people. It was like, who's here in LA? The other factor um, was trying to find people who were like medium good at Nintendo games. So um, there are there are friends who would have I would have loved to involve, but they just like are not familiar with Nintendo games at all. Everybody here, the intention was they're all like decent or good at Nintendo. And that way it should be roughly even when we're like playing the games, right? The exceptions were Ludwig is way better than everybody else at Smash Bros. But so to counter that, I forced him to play one of his shitty characters. So that's why that's why he played shitty characters. Like I, I was like, you, you're just not allowed to play Jigglypuff. You're not allowed to play Fox. And then uh, on top of that, um, yeah, it was like people who are too good. Squeaks was like too good at Mario 64. Um, so there were there were people who are like, I literally didn't invite because they would have been too good. So I it was like a kind of strange thing. It was mostly just who do I think would be fun, but there were people, it was either like getting them to the physical place in a way that wouldn't cost e even more money. And then also would it make for like a competitive kind of format. So was Ludwig being, a, being an antagonist decided beforehand or an improvisation? Ludwig just seems to kind of, like, paint himself as the heel a lot of the times in shows, it seems like. I did not tell Ludwig that we were all going to talk shit about him. <laughs> um, would, have I, would I have invited RT Game? Of course. RT's awesome. I mean, there's tons of people who would have been, who would have, I would have loved to invite on this. Th this this show was not, here are the eight people who I like. <laughs> like, it was, here are eight people who I think make sense with like what I'm specifically looking for with this show and particularly within the context of I'm trying to save some money because this is already costing a crazy amount of money. Um, but yeah, RT would have been phenomenal at this, but he does not live in Los Angeles. In fact, he lives quite far from Los Angeles. What things did go wrong unexpectedly? Honestly, like nothing. It, it was really smooth across the board. I mean, there were like small production things. 
Um, well, you know, you saw like at the beginning of the tennis thing, uh, Parkser's mic was too quiet, so it took, you know, 10 seconds for that to get bumped up to the normal volume. And then we recorded, or the production team recorded separate audio tracks, so I'll be able to, uh, when we put out the YouTube edited video, we'll be able to like readjust audio as needed, so I'm not concerned about that. Um, honestly, I think it just was really good. I think it was really good. And I say that as somebody who used to work in production and normally a lot more shit goes wrong. And I think that the production team just did great. They were just really, really solid. Normally there's a lot, there's at least one or two major problems with things like this. And I can't think of a single thing in the show that was like, that was a huge problem. There was one or two times my code messed up with the gameplay stuff or, or where like the game screwed up in some way, but I was able to quickly fix it. And that was a match that didn't matter anyways because it was squeaks. Um, Squeaks was winning anyways. If the parks or mic was an issue to bring up, that's a massive W. Yeah, it's like small camera shots or audio. And like, if that's your problem, dude, you are fucking golden. Like, it's one of the smoothest productions I've ever done. Yo, what's up, Pluto? Just came to say the Germa reveal was perfect. Yeah, Ger the Germa, Germa being involved with it ended up being like, let's be honest, the best part of the show. <laughs> like, him being the shuffler was... <laughs> just like made it for me like it was so I was just fucking dying at all the weird shit he said um and that was like I said it was like that evolved to be the final product like as it went on you know the initial concept of all this was way simpler can you spoil how long Germa was actually in the box all right fine hold on for everybody else this is only for Pluto for everybody else Germa was in the box for five straight hours um <clears throat> uh so what we did, okay, you guys know how I like killed the shuffler right before the grand finale? Everybody here was like, I seem to misunderstand um, everybody's we don't, skill level. I, I, yeah. I don't play games. Look, the prize together. We're very proud about it. We're very excited. Is it your guys' takes a long time to get a puppy? It's not a movie. Yeah. What are you doing? No, let him talk. I need That's to turn, so I'm going to turn down the emotion module. Okay. No. Oh. Wow. Oh. Okay. So we had to get Germa from the production room into this box. <laughs> and rather than having him inside the box for five straight hours, instead, um, during the final last match, uh, we said, I have to divert all of your power into the shuffling program and you have to turn off your voice module. Feel, feel a little better. Shuffler? Powering down in three, two, no. one. No. We are ready for shuffling. Ladies and gentlemen, let the grand finale of Shuffle Mania. And of course, uh, Twitch chat just spammed free shuffle or the entire uh, grand finale match. Super um, but basically, yeah, during cute. this match, Germa now walked out of the production room, got his mic on, and then got into the box. And we hadn't even tested him revealing himself. Uh, also, what's funny is he, he went at the beginning of this match, and this ended up going for like 10 minutes. So he was like cramped into that box for like 10 straight minutes. Um... So, but it was not for, it was not for four hours. And there were several times there were people who were like, who would, you know, who are helping with the show and helping plan stuff. And then, um, and they would be like, Hey, I don't think we should put German in there for like a whole third of the show. And I'd be like, we're not going to put him in for the, for the show. No, it's just like the very end. Um, not, the damn game before Mario balance. But he yeah. Said so the set designer made this panel so you can kick it out. But we hadn't actually tested it. So he could have just been trapped in there, which would have been fun. Yeah, just good games. I mean, it's a team. It's a team effort, you know. I'd want to make Lud proud, and it was a tough start in melee, but we were able to turn it around. Don't and bring uh, it up again, right? Keep bringing it up. <laughs> I mean, Ludwig did lose in melee. Right. He's bringing up all out of camera. Lose but too. we win. Okay. We win. We so it's a huge. It's a big dub for Team Lud and Squeaks and here. And we're ready Orange. for that really big grand prize. Ooh, I hope it's money. Orange jokes on you guys. It's a fucking tennis match that you hated. <laughs> I am so proud of you for taking home the tournament. I'm so excited to reveal our grand prize, a reveal that is so incredible, Ooh. so mysterious and magical that we had to wait to the very end to show you. I'm scared. Uh, but I have to admit something to you all. Um, the shuffler is not real. What? What? Oh. what? what? So hot? It was German the whole time! What the hell? What the hell? This isn't an AI! Huh? It doesn't make any sense! Oh, it was German! Inside doing all the control. The day before, Parkshire visited the studio so that we could practice the tennis thing before the players were there because the players couldn't know that that there was tennis or that Parkshire was involved. And then Parkshire just was like sitting around the studio eating snacks for like an hour. 
and would just come over here and just put his empty snacks in in this just to make it look more degenerate. Green violence, thanks for the two years. So this shit is just Parkser's detritus that he just let, he just put trash in there that would look more deranged when when Germa came out, and then Germa got the toilet paper roll. There is no reason for him to be dressed like this, by the way. <laughs> the winners, we finally found the winners. So winners, of course, they're right over here. Of yeah. course they oh. are. Dog, okay, hold on a second. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Uh, when I was in there, I, I got bad, pretty badly burnt. Um, some of the wires and I, I <laughs> leaned my head back. Gonna be a thing. Shut and the shut. The, keep going. Keep it was fun too. Is that this was not the actual reveal of the show. And so the players, I was like, I just kept telling them, like, okay, so guys, like, the big reveal is going to be that Germa pops out at the end, right? And so they thought they were in on everything. Like, they thought they knew everything that was going to happen. Well, I, I leaned my head back, and I, I hit my head on a wire, and I saw colors. For like okay, so we have our two winners of the yeah! tournament. Yeah! Germa and I worked hard. Yeah, he just yeah. flew in like this. Why don't you go ahead? And the fact that this is over a full tennis outfit is even more insane. Yeah, and then he gives medals, and this was like, yeah, he wanted to do the whole Wizard of Oz thing. Hi, hi. You've had a brain all along. One tiny thing I wish we did different is I, I wish Ludwig had given medals not to these two, but only to the people on the couch, because that way Ludwig and Squeaks would have, would have ended the show with nothing, right? They did technically end with the cheapest medals we could find on Amazon. Because, <laughs> like, I just love the idea that the winners of Shuffle Mania get nothing and that, like, me and Jerma win the show. And we get the trophy and it ends on us winning, which is, we still got, is right? Oh, Natal, thank you for the two years. Oh. Dummy. Yeah, oh, you're so right. Okay, it hurtful. Right. 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 Put this up here. You're so right. Everything you say hurts. <laughs> yeah, the brain is up here. Smart man. Thank you, Jerma. Squeaks. Yes. The heart. There's also, I think he was genuinely disheveled. There's like five more medals in here. Like, Jerma just, like, I think actually kind of broke his brain when he was hiding in here. In here, like it's, it's a small the box, bridge. and there's machinery the everywhere. Oh, of course, I remember. Like, he was it's supposed to give out like six medals. Thanks so much. The brain, the heart. Oh, this is heavy. And which one to use the lion? <laughs> Stands. Yeah, like this song I it's picked. I was like, we have to use the Mario Galaxy credit song because it it was, it just fits this feeling so perfectly in that it's like completely inappropriately climactic. <laughs> it's Wilmeth. <laughs> Doug's oh bald God. spot. Yeah, Thank you for the you one talk. year. Yeah. Is that tight enough for you? Thank you. Uh, and the dog. The dog. It's like the puppy. Like Fido. I forgot the dog. He's a case Where's study as to why those X-ray technicians run dog. away before they, they take your X-ray. Yeah. Did Dorothy go home? <laughs> this, wait, this, this is not the. It's the shuffle thon. Right. I've been in there for fucking four hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, have a, yeah, I have a question. Was I did want to gaslight everybody and say that Jerma was in here the whole show, but enough of you have asked that I can't really. Uh, shit inside me talk because you were using the bathroom inside the shovel. The oh. shoveler. Oh. All I'm going to tell you is I would not, oh. I would not, I would take a bit 40 minutes before you oh. Oh, Jesus. God. But congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And then the whole tennis bit. Thank you. All right, I'll undo, oh, unpause alerts. After having watched the entire event, I think we can all agree. You need better voice recognition we software. Falbert was robbed of that bonus event. I mean, Germa, how's this? What's this yeah, the voice program's not very At good. Con, we had a conversation. Yeah. And you would not believe how difficult it is to find people to do this thing. Yeah. And yeah, and so at this point, none of the players... Is... <laughs> tennis! tennis! What? What? What do you you guys want to play? You want to play tennis with us? We're gonna play tennis. We've been looking for partners because Jeremy and I got into it. Yes. And we were watching this earlier, but for tennis, um, we're dude. I think we lost the country. Hold on a second. Yeah, no, we're playing nothing. Nothing, so nothing that he just said was funny. Douche, I've been we, rolled in your stream without protection of subscription, and now I have ads. <laughs> Kids, Dude, so let this be a lesson to you all. Show, Practice you safe douche watching, use protection, to subscribe. To that is the yeah, most yeah, potent yeah, yeah. subscription. I wouldn't have drank so Ladies and gentlemen, Good time. it's time for ads! I need to turn that down, it is so loud. Yeah, I didn't- I wasn't able to strip properly here. Yep, and then we go play tennis. Uh, we- we talked about tennis earlier in the stream. If you want to hear about tennis, you can hear about it then. Um, oh, and then- yeah, and then Germ at the end. Like, so we did the credits. Um...
Yeah, Ludwig's saying what? He, Ludwig and Squeaks, I think, were the most... the people who would have been the most perturbed by being forced to play tennis. So I'm, I'm glad... I'm gonna mute this. Uh, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad they were the, the ones who ended up as the winners. Oh, Parkser... Parkser got... was like, why did you put me in the credits as legal advice? Because <laughs> they just asked me... <laughs> who I wanted to put in the credits. And then Perry was like, I, Barry did the trailer, but otherwise it, Perry, it was just me and Perry. And then Perry just ran the game stuff. It was like mostly me, but I was like, oh, we'll just, I'll just throw people into the, into the, into the credits. It'll be funny. So Perry's producer and then Barry Bebop is funny magic movies. And then I put Sam Witch for hair and makeup. Cause she gave me a haircut. <laughs> Not for the show, she just gave me a haircut. And then Parkser is legal advice. And then Parkser is like, why did you put Parkser and not like my actual name? And I thought uh, it, it was funny. Oh, and then, um, uh, you can see here, by the way, if you watch the credits, there's like a lot of people involved with, with shows like this, yeah? Um, so then at the end, I didn't plan this. I thought they were just gonna like end. And then Jerma, I guess after the tennis thing, ran into the control, like ran into the production control room and then, and then did this. Okay, I need to like not play this so it doesn't get muted. Hey chat. <laughs> How about a movie? <laughs> yeah, they didn't have a third movie ready so they just replayed the second one but um... <laughs> But yeah, that was that was fantastic by him. Like, I was still just out at the tennis court, and he like ran back into the control room, and it was like, "Let's end with another movie." What a name! What a what a movie! Yeah, maybe maybe we'll watch this movie at some point on stream. Um, all right, what other questions you got? Tennis player and former coach here. It was very believable that you played for about two months in high school. You know, it's embarrassing. Played for like a year and a half. Did you intentionally leave the city skylines text at the bottom? Oh, oops. Alert. Watching this stream can cause cringe in small-minded individuals. Look away now. I think it wasn't that cringy. I honestly think it was not that cringy. A few of the bits were clearly, like, you know, planned. But even then... I, I think we dodged time, most the of the cringe that events like this have. <laughs> yeah, Snooker would be funny. I mean, there's like a few cringy moments where we're clearly doing scripted bits, but I think we have one of the lowest cringe, like, quantities of almost any of the shows birthday. that people put on. Can we wish her a happy birthday? Happy birthday, Heart. Pinoli. Ugh. Happy 48th birthday. Zero cringe? Yeah, I think it's very little. I mean, the shuffler just being hilarious, I think, helps reduce cringe, cringe a lot. Hey, Doug, the players just talking a lot of shit. See my wife for our anniversary. Thank you for streaming. It means a lot. You're welcome. I hope you get better, man. COVID sucks. Um, I managed to dodge COVID, but get extremely bad influenza and cold stuff. If you do YouTube stuff. streams, hit up Ludwig to get his plug-in thing, which makes YouTube streaming much more similar to Twitch streaming. Yeah. Adding points, fixing chat, etc., etc. Uh, yeah. There was literally no drama. In I'm trying to think the if there's any drama. The impressive thing was that the players legit liked Kirby mode. Kirby mode is is incredibly fun. <laughs> It's just an awesome, it's just an awesome game mode. It's so fun. Um, hey, that guy just wanted to say how great of an inspiration you are and how happy it makes me every time you stream slash psych got him. Lamau, 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 right. Am I right? Fucking got me, dude. Did the players pick their partners? Yes. I invited Doug, the eight people and I was like, tell me who you want to. Twitch, charity, rugby, or American football or soccer match next with Parkser as ref, please all. I am probably not going to reuse the joke of a show turning into a sports match. <laughs> like, it feels like that's kind of a one and done thing. I would much rather, um, I would much rather do a new thing. Biggest drama was when Alpharad said Doug knew no women. Um, it is true that the majority of my friends in LA are male, but, um, I have multiple friends who I would, would, would have liked to invite, but again, like I said, there needs to be, the people in this particular show had to be knowledgeable with Nintendo games, like, fairly familiar with Nintendo games. Yeah, like, Sandwich, like, uh, having Sam would, would have been great, except she sucks ass at Nintendo games, by her own admission, and I told her that, to her face, like, <laughs> not a secret, 
So, yeah. I need to, I guess, find more uh, women friends who are good at Nintendo games for this show that I'm not going to do a sequel for. Hey, Innsbruck. What happened to the ball pit room? The posters? The ball pit? We miss them. Dearly. The, the ball pit balls are all in a room in my place. I just haven't unpacked them. They're all in trash bags. Uh, the posters were lost to the annals of time. Thanks for all your hard work and for continuing to push the envelope. Thank you, Cyril. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really I proud of this event. I don't know what to put here. Anyways, here is Wonder Woman. Uh, close. Thanks, Loggy. Uh, the what now? You have two ballrooms. No, I'm, I mean, I moved out of my old place in Washington. I am now fully... You suck at tennis. I'm now fully in the thing. Yeah, a tennis is not like riding a bike, apparently. Or at least I was not good enough at tennis to remember, like, any tennis. I got one good serve off. I did nail, like, one serve, but for the most part, I don't remember how to play tennis. When you told him to mix together the drunk module with the other modules. Yeah. Jim, I was incredible with that. Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, this is not how you play tennis. <laughs> By the way, you can't just hit it out of midair like that. <laughs> Were the movies used as a set break? Yes. That's how it started. I talked about it a little bit earlier. Or, wait, these are probably just really, really, really delayed messages. Um, because I, these, it's been paused most of the time. But yes, like I mentioned, it, like, it was this slow you evolution. For three years. Uh, Mr. That's Steal Your Donuts, thank you for three years. I'm starting stream affirmations, Tihi. You're doing great. If your day sucked, please know it'll get better. Sending all my love less than three. <laughs> thank you. Um. Stream idea. Chat fights over what copyright free movie we watch and sabotage each other with either real ads or zabies. Yeah, that's the other thing I gotta talk about is YouTube streaming. It's the only thing I gotta talk about today. I'll, uh, I'll let the alerts play for a little bit and just uh, answer any other questions. How much would in putting together Hearthstone Tournament Productions came into play for this? Quite a bit. Um, so all the stuff I've been showing about like, for, for example, knowing what a run of show, um, Oh, oops. Yeah, I showed the link. Uh, okay, a bunch of people. Uh, so you can see, like, um, knowing how to list out, I don't know, like, for example, graphics. Like, knowing what we needed for graphics, um, what kind of stuff is going to be necessary for each piece of the graphics. Um, Knowing like what the flow is going to be going back and forth with the graphics team and how graphics integration works live Knowing how set design works and approximately what I can expect for a certain amount of, of budget, right? Because we went into it when we were kind of like, okay, here are the different categories of what you could approximately get For this amount of money, right? And so I ended up increasing the amount of money we're spending because um, Increasing the amount of money we we're spending because that's <laughs> nice uh, because I was like, shit, okay, if we, if we add, you know, another $5,000, we can do this. Like, that'll be awesome. And I was getting sponsors lined up on the YouTube channel. So I was like, okay, I can justify this. Um, uh, yeah, things to, like, so talking about the run of show, like how the actual show flows, um, how the, like the general, why is this going off? The, the general structure of like what the production team Oh yeah, this is actually a good serve and it just, it cut out. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, across the board, I was, I completely understood what the process would be for putting all this stuff together. I think it still would have gone very well and I think it, I still would have been able to figure it out. Um, but it was, yeah, it just makes it a lot, lot easier. The fact that I like know the full process of how this works. Maybe finding a venue not in Greece would have cut costs limo. Yeah, that was a bit expensive. What production team did you work with? It was off-brand, which is Ludwig's company. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's now, uh, off-brand is the company that Ludwig that is the main so owner of, I think. I home from work and laugh too. It really was well done. Even your crispy mic was just chef's kiss. Yeah, it was nice and crispy. <laughs> I forgot the fail boat. I like hit him with a ball and he just gets knocked off the bed. You should have put apple juice bottles in the German box to really sell it. Yeah, that's true. That yeah, apple juice would have been really funny.
Next time, pretend the prize is tennis again, but start up Mario Tennis instead. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to rerun the tennis bit. I do actually want to play tennis again. It'd be fun. I played I played casually for a few years growing up. Um, and then I hey, played Doug, seriously I'm in high school for real quick one year. tell you that you should probably lock the run of show document. Yeah, I learned that now. I've got, I mean, it's, there's nothing like ultra sensitive in here, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's it's the run of show. It's it's what the show is. When talking um, about profits, I think you're underselling how much value oh yeah, an event like this adds to your brand. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the question is though, like, if if I'm doing this fairly infrequently, how much does that add? You know, like if 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 I came out of this and I'm like, Clearly, I'm doing this every three months, time, which is not feasible is for me. Everything thinks it's going to end in a sports match. And when they ask about it, you act like they're crazy for thinking that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I, I don't really care that much. I just wanted to do it to connect with people and, like, put on a fun event with friends. I didn't even really care if people watched it. And a bunch of people watched it, which was awesome. We had, like, 32,000 people watching. And then, you know, presumably people will watch it on uh, YouTube and whatnot. Well, so it did, re it did, like, way better than I was expecting. Um, I just thought it'd be fun to do. So, I don't know. And that's kind of the driving factor for most of what I do, right? Um, I've never really been very good at, like, optimizing for, you know, viewership and money and all that stuff. Um, so I, I'm, I don't know. Like, if I end up, like, like I talked about earlier, I'd want to do something that doesn't require me to be insanely involved with it in the way that I was. Like, it's more delegated or I have a more, like, defined role in it that doesn't involve the other pieces of the show, right? Um... And then maybe if I do that regularly, that helps the brand. But I, I don't know. And like, I don't care too much, really. Um, I don't know. I'm proud of the show, and that's pretty much okay. it. Okay, you won't do a game show into a sports game. But how about a sports game into a game show? Maybe. Probably I'll do something different. The next thing I do, I, I do think like game show-esque seems very fun. I'm still Me surprised Jerma's down for bits and isn't zero motion. Can you say hi to what? my boyfriend, Dylan Oaks? Hi, Dylan Oaks. What's up? That sounds like a D's nuts joke. Um, yeah, it was good. Hey Doug, I dig the content you're doing great. Except the hair, the hair doesn't look very good. I kind of like it now. I'm not gonna bleach my hair again. Puckhead, thank you for the 12 months, man. I appreciate it. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, Germa, Germa's, Germa's great. He was really great to work with. Um, he has just endless, just. <laughs> bits and ideas coming out of his brain like <laughs> yeah the morning of the show he was still just like oh we can do this and this this thanks for not bringing up germa's violent out outbursts yeah um he did he did try to break a glass bottle on my head i mean it was breakable but <laughs> jesus take the wheel how long did I mean, that's why we don't have any of the BTS when stuff. When you decide you want it to this? Because basically, like, if you if you turn the camera around, right, during any part of the show, Jerma is committing crimes. And there's, like, a whole squad of police just trying to track him down. And I figured it would just be a mess to edit together. So we just, I'm staying focused on the main show. Sorry, you said something. Another good end I bit would it. have been to reveal that the finalists would play against Ninja and PewDiePie. And then you talk about how much it cost and how long it took to set up. Then it's two cardboard cutouts of them, and then they will have to play against the cutouts. No I, cutaways. We just could. We really could have just kept the reveals going, just on and on and on and on, just reveals for another five hours. <laughs> you should be either very pleased or disturbed to know that Shuffler has become a Tumblr sexy man. Good news for me. I don't know what that means, so I don't have to be disturbed or whatever else. Uh, is that like a bad thing? I've never been on Tumblr. Hey, I saw Doug, one Shuffle fan art, which was, was amazing delightful. And my favorite stream of the year. I can't believe you actually delivered on the tennis joke. That reveal was brilliant. Yeah. My streamer Doug to heart. I, I'm very excited that the tennis thing worked out. That was a stupid amount it of time and effort. It was fun during the weekend after finishing my studying. And during college, it was a great boost. Thank you. You always helped my day. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah, it was it was great. Um, Very fun time. Very fun hey, time. Hey, Doug. I had this very strange dream. I think you were in it. It was a sentient robot at best with movies and a constantly shuffling room. Should I be worried? Yes. Maybe go back down to the basement, take a nap. Uh, other thing I want to talk about this stream, which, I mean, My there's a bunch more... happened during the show. 
Can I get a personalized cash in the trash? That's cash in the trash. Thanks, Bond Point. I appreciate it. Um, there's still a bunch of TTS questions coming in. The other thing I want to talk about is um, is YouTube. Did any of you guys watch this would on be YouTube? Really funny if in the next event it was themed around puzzle solving, and at the end you reveal the winners were being recruited for a bank job. Then the moment they say yes, sirens go off and you cut to black as ops walking. <laughs> that is that is funny. Hi, Doug, It'd be funny if we take them on a real to bank catch heist. Your stream for the first time in ever. I just bleached my hair two weeks ago. You copied me. That's not exactly how time works, but you know what? That's my bad. Um, I am certainly not going to bleach my hair again because the amount of commentary about it has been so obnoxious that I will never deal with this again. Um, I don't know. How do I? Okay. Oh, there's something you I was going to say right before this. did not try to kill Ludwig after all he did to the shuffler. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, I mean, like, from the beginning, Le Germa was just, like, readied up to talk shit about Ludwig. <laughs> the prize should have been the winners have to help you move. So you, with no cuts, put them in a truck and drive them back to Washington. And it was all a scam to get them to help you move. What would be cool is the whole show is filmed in a crane. But, like, the players don't know. So we're like, we're already like 10,000 feet up in the air. And then the instant the play, the winners get there, we're like, you guys win a free skydiving trip. I pull a lever, the whole floor drops out under underneath them. And then they have to figure out how to use the parachute live. Be pretty dope. Something to consider. Brands would love that. La the last stream Ludwig ever does. That's hype, dude. You get a lot of sponsorship money for that. Um, right, For the next got? event, <sighs> would you prefer unique one-off events each time, or a format that is easier to repeat? Yeah, so that's that's, Doug Doug. that's interesting. It's another it's another element of all this stuff with production. So, th the thing with productions like this, to to dramatically oversimplify things, if you there's approximately the same amount of pre-production time whether you do a one day show or a five day show, right? As in the amount of like those months of getting the show ready, finalizing all the bits, how's the show work, the set, the lighting, the players, the schedule, the, all that stuff. That's pretty much needs to happen whether your show is one day or 10, right? Um, the amount of pre-production obviously changes, but you do have to do that either way. So um, if this show had been like a series that I would do once a week for five weeks, it wouldn't have taken that much more effort to do, you know? I mean, there there would definitely be, like, more money because you have more production days. But pre-production is a huge amount of the cost. So in theory, if we do another show that, you know, like like a game show type thing, which I would like to do, I, I'd definitely be interested in that that sort of direction. It would then be easier to go, okay, let's we're going to do three days of this or something like that. And then uh, it's, it's much more, like, cost efficient in terms of the number of hours of broadcast you get versus how much pre-production. So that is that is a consideration. Right now I have no concrete plans. I this has been very busy and I'm now wrapped up and I'm intentionally not going to do anything hard for at least the rest, rest of the year, which is you know a month and a half and then I'll figure out what like big projects and stuff I want to do going forward. But uh, I'm I, it's cooking, you know. Things are always happening in my brain. There's there are things hey, happening. Doug, would you mind turning on a high pitched tone? My tinnitus isn't quite loud enough today. I feel like that would upset all the dogs who watch, and I know that there's at least one dog who watches my stream. <clears throat> like your Miskiff stream. Oh, right, I did the Miskiff school have thing. I one question. Was I was Jim like really the sick. The entire way through, or was some form of pre-recorded voice or I involved to give Jim a time to breathe in between? It was him the whole time, but uh, like I mentioned earlier, he had like 200 pre-recorded sounds hey, on soundboards that, that he was using. I see the stress from Shuffle Mania is finally getting to you. After all, why else would your hair be graying and balding so quickly? I only got, what, maybe like another month before the Doug is blonde jokes finally die. And we go back to good old-fashioned bald jokes. The crane skydiving stream. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> we just need to find the right sponsors. Okay, I talked about that like five minutes ago, so it means the alerts are close to caught up. And then we'll talk about YouTube. I'm a tumblerina and I didn't know Shuffler was a sexy man. What? I, just I don't know what that means. It's true. Oh my god. Sadly, Gemma is getting all the credit for it. That's fine. Anyway, congrats for breaking into Tumblr audience. You're the next stream now. I mean, cool. Gemma was the, was the fun part of it, right? In terms of like what you would visually celebrate from the show. It was definitely the Gemma pieces. Thank you, Fruity. Which I'm fine with. I don't need or really B2 want w, to be like the star. If you still want to revise the chat as of, 
May I suggest you include a promise to follow the way of the otter, but never explain it. That way whenever we annoy you, you can just say that we've strayed from the way, no elaboration needed. I do, I do like where your head's at. Throws planned? The bottle throws were planned, yeah. Only one of them. One of the bottle throws, the first bottle throw we thought it'd be funny for, for Germa as the shuffler to say, beer me, <laughs> to Ludwig. And then Ludwig would throw it. That was the only one that was planned. I actually expected you to let the winners play against chat and rig it so that chat wins the whole thing. Oh, that would have been good, yeah. Also, you like can chat the ending. whole event from taxes, so you should make the next event even more expensive. Okay, it is true. Can we watch a movie? It, it is true that I this is an expense. So yes, it will go against my income for the year. It, that's, um, it's like a deduction, kind think, of. Doug, I had an issue at a recent job interview where I shit myself horribly during it. Being the shit king and all, how do you clean these messes? Hold on, wait for me to get that bleach cleanup sponsorship first. Uh, but basically because of this, I will disc. have a lot less uh, profit this year. Uh, but again, as I mentioned earlier, due to the... Due to the state of sponsorships and the YouTube channel doing well, I am able to fund things like this fairly comfortably. So it's not, uh, yeah, it's not like I'm destitute Call now or Duty something. Call of Duty tournament where the winners fight in a real war. Oh, that'd be sick. Like the winners get re automatically recruited for the army. Like we take them outside and boot camp is right there. It's tax deductible and you're moving down a tax bracket. Yeah, it might help me bump <laughs> downwards in my tax bracket. No, I mean, I'll, I'll be good. As I mentioned, I'm I'm very fortunate. Things are doing quite well. Um, but yes, finances are, are obviously something I have to consider as I think about, okay, wh how much, how often do I want to do things like this before? Oh, somebody mentioned something I thought was interesting, which is that I could do an in-person studio show like this for the Rosa stream. Which could which could be really cool, but I'm, I'm like, I was thinking about that a little bit. My concern is that it would lose some of the intimacy of that stream, you know? Not romantic in intimacy, obviously, but like the fact that it is just this kind of janky thing where I can like write code and have games be modded and all this stuff. And and like with a show, again, this is, you, you have a lot, it's, it's a lot harder to do things spontaneously in an environment like this, right? You have to coordinate between literally like 10 people to do anything um, and to have like planned it in advance for the most part. So, I think it'd be really cool in some ways, but then, you know, we, we lose some of the, the fun of it. And maybe it's like a two day thing and one hey of the Dylan, days is- I really missed making my money shout at you. Please don't leave us again. Thank you, Dillo. But Shuffle Mania was great. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, oh, there's there, there's also with that, there's some degree of like, okay, let's say an event costs $50,000 to put on. Um, or let's say I do it like much cheaper and we do like 25 grand, which would be a much simpler thing. You would not get a show like this for 25 grand. Let's, I don't know. Let's split it at 40 grand. Okay. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of fucking money. And, uh, and theoretically that money could just go to Rosa, you know? Um, so it's an interesting thing with, with charity events of like, how much money do you want to spend putting on a huge production to raise money? Right. So it's like a kind of strange, um, juxtaposition to it it'd be cool i mean theoretically you could even do something like in a bar or in a like a you know like get a live audience or something um and and do stuff like that for for rosa stream but um i don't know i'll, I'll think about it probably the rosa streams will continue to just be you know in my in my room hey doug new viewers slash do you support trans here slash them trans throw <laughs> these nuts in your mouth got him Thank you. <laughs> all right, I think we're caught up. That's a good indication that we are all Why caught is it up. Still labeled as Rosa's birthday. That means all the money has to go to Rosa. What, what is labeled as Rosa's birthday? Because you can't say trans pride after that. Okay, <laughs> you're not allowed. You need to be more. You, know, you need to be. You need to have I higher standards for trans pride. Be much more Emotes. serious and down to earth. Uh, not what most of your fans are used to. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. You can't have somebody make a D's nuts joke and be like, oh yeah, trans pride. <laughs> um, hey Doug, okay. out of curiosity, how long did it take for this to be set up? How long did you want to do this? And how long did cleanup take? I I've talked about some of that already. This has been happening over the course of like four months probably. 
in with the amount of time it takes increasing as I've gotten closer to the day, um, the actual setup of the set, I think the build was a couple days. Ultimately, that's uh, that's that's the production team would know that. I was not personally there for the set build or the set teardown. Generally, you can tear down a set in one day like that. Generally, the setup is going to be a couple days of them building things in. But I don't know exactly how long it took them or whatnot. Um, and then I don't remember what the other part of that was. Uh, why the trans spam? Any particular reason? I think if if people hear the word trans, it's <laughs> that triggers uh, everybody's a sleeper agent here for some reason. Where <laughs> where if the word tra like I think somebody brought up transmission one time and so I saw a couple people that were like, oh yeah, trans pride. <laughs> like I think everybody's just they've been programmed, um, and for some reason the the, the word just requires. The emote. Somebody made a D's nuts joke is the answer. All right, let's talk um, about YouTube. I am curious to talk a little bit about this here. All right, all right, all right. Uh, for real, please, please do not spam emotes in general. Um, uh, <laughs> as a reminder, love the LGBT love in this community. Please do not, please still follow the rules about not just like spamming tons and tons of emotes. Okay, so as you saw, Transmission Pride. As you saw, I, well, maybe you saw, I, I simulcasted this stream to both Twitch and YouTube. Basically meaning I can stream uh, Twitch and YouTube at the same time. I, um, this is now an option as of like two weeks ago. There were a lot of people who watched on YouTube. There was like 15 or 16,000 people watching, I'm pretty sure. And then on Twitch, it was like 18 or something like that. So there was like almost as many people watching on YouTube as Twitch, which is crazy. Um, so clearly there is an interest. And then I I did a poll on YouTube and I guess 200,000 people voted. Um, so I asked like, would you watch on YouTube instead of Twitch? And people said I'd For watch streams here on YouTube, you I'd watch on Twitch or I wouldn't watch either way. And the winners get their grandparents back. The losers sadly do not get their grandparents back. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. We need, we need higher stakes. Yes. So, sorry. So obviously, yes, the, the poll is on YouTube. So it, it is, but that, that's, that's who I wanted to ask, right? Me asking you guys here on Twitch, whether you'd watch on Twitch or YouTube, you're going to be very biased towards Twitch, obviously. So I wanted to also get the YouTube audience's perspective, like no shit. It's biased. Yes. Um, but that's what I wanted, right? I wanted the YouTube exclusive audience to tell me, would you watch streams here? And 66% of, uh, 200,000, that's like a dollar an hour. So it's a lot of people. Um, so I, I want to at least try it, but I think that streaming on Twitch is way more fun and the Twitch community and features are way more fun. And obviously there's just a lot of, you know, I think it is fair to say that like the majority of my stream is about chat interaction and I don't want it to be like split up and, and, uh, and lost. I also don't really care about having more viewers. In fact, I like, I almost... Streaming almost gets a little less fun, uh, the too, too high of the viewership. Like, how many people are watching right now? There's like 6,000. Frankly, when my stream is over like 10,000, I can't even read the chat, and it gets like even spammier than it already is. So I'm not exactly dying to get more viewers, really. So like, I, I don't even know what the incentive is. I mean, I think the incentive is just, like, it would just allow people who want to check out the streams to check them out. But probably... He hates us. No, no, you guys are the 6,000, so you're chill. You're chill. It's those other 5,000 that show up. Ugh, I hate those guys. Um, I mean, even at 5,000, it's gotten, you know, hard to read chat. <laughs> I think 5,000 5, viewers is when it got to like, whoa, okay, I can barely follow what's going on. And then 10,000, it's like, it's just it's just a blur, right? Um, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, happy to hear your thoughts. First off, I would not stream on Twitch and YouTube um, for every stream. A stream like this that's more chill, casual gameplay, Splunky, Peggle, whatever, I would not do on both. Um, like, I'd much rather just lean into the more chill environment here. Fuck YouTube. We don't really need to, this isn't really like a war that we're, we're not going to battle here. Uh, ideally, it's more of a collaborative community thing. Um, theoretically, though, for the, for the streams that are a little more planned out, you know, where it's like, oh, I'm doing a uh, you know, whatever. RimWorld, but three of you guys are playing the colonists or whatnot. Even all my code is Twitch-based. Okay, basically, the YouTube stream, I would just ignore the chat and everybody who's there. And I would just tell them, hey, if you want to actually participate, come to YouTube or come to Twitch, which is kind of stupid. 
But clearly there's a lot of people who are interested in that. So maybe I still do it anyways? Like, I don't, I don't want to try to manage two streams. And... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I would just pin a message in the YouTube chat that is like... Uh... Come to Twitch if you want to. If you want Doug to read your messages, um, which is probably fine. I, I feel like that's kind of the expectation because YouTube chat is wildly stupid and bad. And I say that to you guys, <laughs> like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, it is so. It's just like incoherent. It's weird. This it looks like actually this was like a little bit better than normal, but I'm sure most people have had the experience. If you check out a YouTube chat, it, it is like nonsense. It's like you're in a daycare and all these children are just like doing separate, like playing separate with separate toys. And there's no, there's nothing that is like correlated at all. It's, it's, I don't understand why. And people are way more likely to just spam old YouTube emotes and stuff. There's a YouTube plugin to send YouTube chat messages to Twitch chat. So I could do that, but like, do I even bother? Doug, I would cry if I had to mod YouTube chat regularly. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, we could just put in emote only mode and then with a pin message that says go to Twitch chat. Um, it's awful and non-mods don't even see the worst of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's terrible. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'll at least try it, then what's the point? Yeah, I mean, so the point would be that a lot of people prefer watching on YouTube, and they don't need to, you know, like, the majority of people do not participate in the Twitch chat, right? Like, here, let me show you. Participate in this poll. Option A! B gang for life. Go ahead and vote. Cool. So, we're at about 300 votes. Let's say we get to, I don't know, 600 or something like that by the time we're done. Um, so, that is about a tenth of the amount of people watching. So, if you think about the number, the people who are watching a given stream, how many of them actively participate in the chat, like right into the chat and whatnot? It's like 10% of people. So the vast majority of people watching streams are not are not chatting, right? And they're not even, they're not voting in the polls. They're not doing whatever. This is exactly 10%, right? So um, the, I think the question is like, is it worth for the people who just want to watch a stream, they theoretically would be able to actually find it on YouTube um, and then if they want to participate, then go to, to Twitch chat or what. And then for a lot of people, they just say, like, it's a lot easier to watch YouTube streams technically on mobile or, um, or like, on a TV or whatnot. Yeah, because YouTube player is a lot better. So theoretically, that's what it's for. It's, like, it's for the people for whom they're not, like, trying to, you know, be one of the Dungeons & Dragons characters or whatnot. But they, they just want to, like, watch the stream and have it on. So... YouTube ads are easier to block. Well, I don't, I don't even play ads on Twitch anyways. I guess you have to deal with the pre-roll ads. And now that Twitch chat can activate ads, you have to deal with that too, I guess. But um Ladies and gentlemen, it's time As I was saying for ads. So as soon as a hot new chat shows up, suddenly they're the focus of your life. <laughs> After how many years do we just not satisfy you anymore? YouTube is not a hot new chat. I don't I don't want to hang out with them, okay? They're, they scare me, okay? You guys are way cooler. I would never betray you. There's no money in YouTube. Well, I'm not streaming for the money, so I don't really care. Um, I am fortunate in that I make plenty of money off of things in general. I, I, I don't I, I don't need more money. So the, the incentives here are not about optimizing for money. Uh, it's just what would people like this? Would I like this? That that's that's the only uh, the only factor that I'm considering. Based on view time, do you make more money with a YouTube Premium or Twitch? I figure PayPal gives you the most directly in donations. Yeah, I think PayPal is the most direct. I, I don't know about ad revenue because I don't play a lot of ads on Twitch. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. 
I mean, it's it's worth remembering, like, the majority of my viewership and, and you know, where I'm able to make money is YouTube. Like, my, my main YouTube channel. So, uh, I'm fortunate in that streaming is not something where I need to worry about the, the financials of it, really. Like, I, I more think of the financial situation as... Can my YouTube channel fund my projects, fund my team of employees, you know, pay my rent? And then stream is like a bonus on top of that. So I'm, I wouldn't expect the YouTube stream to really make any money, particularly if I'm ignoring the chat, because then why would anybody donate in YouTube, right? Like, so presumably this doesn't, this does not generate any money for me, really. Um, and I put the VODs on YouTube anyway. So I, I think this would basically make zero additional dollars for me. I could be way wrong there. I, I don't know. I'm not very knowledgeable about um, YouTube streaming yet, but Do I don't think it Discord would be much money. About it. I mean, at this point, I think I have enough info, which is that I want to try it and see what happens. And I, I think mostly it'll be about, does it feel like, does it feel like there's a way to incorporate the YouTube audience in While a meaningful way? Stream on Twitch. Or YouTube is it okay if I just ignore because them? Because I can rewind or pause streams and not miss much. Yeah. The rewinding feature on YouTube is really nice. It's so nice. Like, definitely the, the actual player of watching the stream um, way, trans. way better. <laughs> yeah, he got him. Um, you can have a YouTube a stream. Where, yeah, that being said, we are going to... I definitely... We're going to do a stream. Point Lord, thank you. I watched this show on YouTube on my TV as if it was an actual TV show. I'd argue it made it far more immersive for me, and I watched it on PC instead. Yeah, I think people like it. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, we're definitely going to do Mario Party Twitch chat versus YouTube chat, by the way. And potentially even Twitch chat versus YouTube chat versus Point Crow's Twitch chat versus Point Crow's YouTube chat, which I think would be funny. <coughs> Hoggies. Yeah. I, I I don't know exactly how much, you know, uh, how much content we'll get out of um, Twitch chat versus YouTube chat, but certainly a stream or two would be would be pretty fun. All right. Every stooped solo is to recruit the YouTube dweebs to the cult. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Uh, I don't want to recruit the, like, YouTube chat spammers. I, I don't want them in I don't want them on Twitch. The people who just show up in YouTube you channels and just spam shit? Can to Doug Doug? Doug 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 and Doug 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 Doug. Uh, I might actually be able to. That would be funny. Like, you can pick three different channels which all have the exact same content. <laughs> the mods would love that. <laughs> Um, I think something like Crow where you stream one day a week on YouTube as a gateway stream so people who get into it come over to Twitch. Yeah. Also, you can always do the Twitch chat versus YouTube chat events. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. I will I will probably that and do YouTube the occasional... That has a tendency to be much more unfunny than Twitch that. Yeah. And I don't, I don't get why that is. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Um, yeah, theoretically, I could just turn off the chat on the YouTube streams because Twitch chat is in the stream right here, right? So that way, if they want to see chat, they still see Twitch chat, just not YouTube chat. And that might make it easy. And then it's like, hey, if you want to watch on YouTube, you can do that. If you want to participate, the only way to do that is on Twitch. And maybe that would, uh, maybe that would help things. They're much younger. I don't know about that. I don't get it because the YouTube, according to my analytics, the vast majority uh, of my audience is 18 to 30 and maybe it's a ton of children lying about their age, but I don't think so. Cause there's still like 15% that is 13 to 17. So I think, and also just based off like the meet and greets I've done, I think most, most people watching the channel are adults. Um, but it's like the kids who are there when they see a YouTube chat, just like go, something goes off in their brain. They're like, I need to spam shit. I don't get it. As a 33-year-old, I feel old. Oh, my God. You're 33? You are so fucking old. Oh. I'm 33 in a month. <laughs> um, YouTube chat is general normie public. Yeah, I, I just don't get it. I don't get why. I don't get why. I don't get why people are... I mean, already, there's lots and lots and lots of people who come into Twitch chat and spam stuff. And I feel like we, we do a fairly decent job of making the chat mostly interesting. Like, obviously, right now, everybody is screaming old and bald, and that is arguably not particularly interesting. But, like, there's, like, you know, there's lots of funny TTS messages and lots of messages that are in chat that we, like, call out and notice. Like, I, th you know, like, our Twitch Twitch chat's hilarious. There's, you know, there's a lot of shit we got to weed through, but it's hilarious. It's awesome. Um, 
And for some, I just, yeah, I don't, I do not understand why the YouTube chats seem to be so much worse. Yeah, it, it's got to be kids, but, but again, I, I, I don't know why the Twitch audience would be way older than the YouTube audience. I, I just, I don't understand that. I don't know. Hey, Doug, me and my 5,000 friends can't believe you hate us. It's not our fault we are not divorced yet. God, there's that <laughs> classic divorce joke. <laughs> See, here on Twitch, we're creative Hi, and clever. Can we do Mario Party or other games where it's a crew and Z crew versus YouTube and yes. crew and Z crew? Yeah, you you, uh, you beat me to it. But yeah, I want to do some Twitch versus YouTube stuff. But that that's not like, you know, we'll get like two streams out of that. I, I don't think that's like, a, that'll be super entertaining. University representative here. That's we're not what the name is. We're very happy how you represented us on my Keith schooled. However, I want to let you know we have a new class about <laughs> Colors of the Rainbow starting up. I think you might be interested. Yeah, by the way, I won Ms. Kiff's game show, and I proved that I am very smart. So that was great. I feel like I want—I kind of want to study for the final, because then I could win $50,000 if I win that show. So maybe I'll do like a study stream and literally just study fifth grade, like science and math and stuff to try to win the 50 grand. But then I'll feel really stupid if I don't. My favorite part about YouTube chat is I regard- Oh wait, no, that's a TTS. Hey, Doug. Loved the show, especially the part where everyone was constantly touching the microphones on their headsets and Classic. making lovely noises. Classic. Please include more headsets next time. Oh, and we all just had both streams open, so those YouTube numbers were just- <laughs> hey, Yeah, Doug, you guys are just view -botting. I actually first saw the stream link on YouTube and was confused why it was there. But then I saw it was also on Twitch, so I switched there. Yeah. But only because I wanted my Twitch points, lol. People but would eventually learn. A versus Z crew, we get Twitch versus YouTube. You actually did. Why did you guys so have you two hate streams YouTube people? Good. I hate them too. I like my YouTube viewers. I just don't like the YouTube audience that talks in in Twitch in YouTube chats. I don't understand who they are. They don't seem like real people to me. Like literally, I don't told understand. Us not to worry about Nessic cry. <laughs> No, guys, I won't, I won't, I won't hang out with that chat. They don't even seem that cool. You guys are, you guys are my favorite chat. But actually, though. Fat Albert Mover. New to the stream. What's that time? <laughs> See, I don't, like, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want the, yeah, I guess they're saying movie and you guys are saying movie. All right, you're pretty in sync, actually. Uh, sorry, I missed your message. What, I, what did you just say? It's a two-year subscription. It's Pause that thing to to the Duke Doug community by having different apps to interact with. YouTube is the tip of the iceberg and Twitch is one layer down. Yeah. Then Discord, etc. stream on Twitch and YouTube might break that pattern. That's true. We do have like a funnel of uh, YouTube is the broad audience. And then and then if you want to get weird, you start getting to like Doug Doug clips. And then the Doug Doug clips people are like, oh, I should go check out Twitch. And then you get into Twitch. And then from Twitch, yeah, probably the weirdest you can get is Discord. Like, then you're really Doug-pilled. Okay, I am probably going to wrap up. I feel like I've covered most of the things. There's a couple more TTS messages, but... Um... If you won't be putting too much effort into the YouTube chat anyways, what is the reason not to do it every stream? I think also, that... insert these nuts joke here. Got him. Um, there is... <sighs> so there's a concern that if I'm just streaming constantly on my YouTube channel and people don't engage with it, that it will actually hurt my videos being recommended to people, which again is like my core sort of business and audience, which is pretty important because I have like six people who depend on me for to live. <laughs> so I, I do need to make sure that is like protected, right? Um, and if I put out a bunch of casual streams, that can make the YouTube algorithm go, eh, people aren't that interested in this channel anymore, even if they're really interested in the videos. In general, it seems like the algorithm is pretty good at separating those two things, but still, it's uh, it's dangerous, right? Jesus, and, take the wheel. And I, I would hate for like the many scruff. Thank you for the five gifted subs, man. I appreciate it. I would hate for the many, many, many hard years of work I've put in to building up the YouTube channel to be lost because of that. Even though most likely that wouldn't happen. And again, what is what is the upside of it? There's not really any upside. Again, I don't really care about having more viewers or whatnot. So there's the, the only reason to do this is to give people stuff that they would want to watch. Presumably that is the like streams that are a little more planned, but I don't know. That's my current thoughts on it. Not being super 
uh, deeply knowledgeable about the YouTube ecosystem yet. I need to learn more about it. Um, and like, you know, I can talk to Ludwig, for example, or, or Point Crow or Failboat and uh, and hear what works for them or whatnot. Doug, you fuck. You made me need to resub using Prime for free. Just click the checkbox chat and resub with Twitch Prime. Transprime. Why did I make you do that? Guilty. You should start a tennis content channel. I prefer Twitch, but Twitch doesn't <sighs> have an app on my smart TV. YouTube does. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Can you do a trial with your secondary channel? Yeah, I mean, in theory, I could stream everything to Doug, Doug, Doug. But it just, it just feels like... Great I, I job know. on the we'll shuffling, see. Doug. Uh, Any interest in collaborating with other YouTube people like Game Grumps? 10 minutes power hour crossover? Uh, maybe. I, I don't know those guys. I guess now I know Ross, but... Um, who used to be on Game Grumps. Uh, potentially. I think it just depends on what the collab is like. I love Game Grumps, but, um... But I, I feel like I'm not, uh... I, I don't think that I'm a Play-Doh blob that you can just mold into any show. I, I think that they're... I'm not, like, great in certain environments. There's certain things I can do that I think are interesting and funny, and there's others that I don't. I don't know that me just doing improv comedy is ever going to really land super hard. So I think it just depends on collab stuff. Like, what it is. Hey, Doug. Is Dog Hole Stocks publicly open to buy? Could Twitch chat buy Dog Hole Stocks? No, but I do have a stock... Um, stock market idea that I've wanted to do for a while that now that things are finally settled down I should be able to actually do which I'm excited about I think it'll be fun I think it'll be really fun it will be channel points based so is Ludwig not wearing a shirt underneath? <laughs> I didn't see that he definitely came into the studio wearing a shirt so I guess he took it off for this um, yeah I'm excited for the for the stock market stream that will be a lot of programming though so I don't know when that'll happen, or if it'll happen. Maybe it'll end up not making sense, but... Typical All right, last couple milk alerts. Your Twitch viewers dry and then move on to a hot younger milkable chat. Don't worry. You guys have so much milk left. You guys are my prized dairy cow. You're not going anywhere. I think even the notification on YouTube that you started to stream would be make PP watch on Twitch. Many are not in the Discord to get the notification there. Yeah, I mean, I could basically think about YouTube as an advertisement for Twitch. Um, to add on what I said previously, my particular but, smart TV did not have the means to access Twitch on its own. Don't know how that works for other TVs, so having it available on YouTube to watch on my big screen was very much enjoyable. Nice. Okay. Yeah, good to know. So, 200,000 people answered this poll, and two-thirds of them said that they would watch here on YouTube. So, in theory, there is like 130,000 or 120 or whatever, thousand people who would be interested in just watching on YouTube and not needing to like come over to Twitch. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I'll experiment with it. We'll, we'll, I'll try it. We'll see what happens. Would it be possible for you to do Twitch chat versus YouTube chat challenges? Yep. Yep. We'll definitely do that. Um, I don't know. I don't think that'll be like a super common thing, but. 130,000 viewers the people on champ. Twitch use it regularly and get integrated into the hive mind. For example, divorce. There you YouTube go. is much more casual and less of a community. Yeah, that's why I would still focus primarily on on uh, Twitch. Mainly do Twitch, but only stream the more event Just game show collab things. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. All this slander. Yeah, I don't think they're going to hear about it. Versus Discord chat. If maybe that is possible, that would be funny. Me versus me with voice commands versus Discord versus you YouTube versus Twitch. Hate YouTube chat Twitch chat number one. Damn right. The the war has begun. Now that there's a new uh, a new thing to go antagonize, Twitch chat is already off to the races. Rough roll. Thank you for the one year, man. My favorite okay, bit how? about YouTube chat is how, regardless of the gaming event, people without fail spam wear silk song them. I should probably play that game, Hollow Knight. At some point. Um, Sometimes how... it's hard for me to watch YouTube streams or even other Twitch streamers because their chats are just so, so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I wouldn't want to do that. All right. Um, how many more alerts Here is do my I have? chat difference theory. Twitch is primarily a platform for gamers and the streamers they watch. YouTube has that audience, but also the casual video watcher audience. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. 
Part of the reason Twitch tends to skew slightly older, Twitch isn't a default app on every phone. Yeah. It is strange. We are objectively the best chat. I mean, I agree. Thank I you, agree. Mods, for enabling our gambling addictions in Shuffle Mania. I 4x my points. Nice job. Yeah, there's no gambling on YouTube. What kind of awful stream experience is that? When you can't even gamble and then get way too emotionally invested in something that doesn't matter. Hey, Although, Doug, I guess I did just say we're going to do a stock market YouTube, stream. Chat, get married, and then divorced. <sighs> I mean, I'll ask Parks here. Okay, I think we're, I think we're there with... Um, Wait, nope, nope, there's more. Twitch chat is main character. YouTube chat is unfunny jester. <laughs> right. Uh, unlike the constantly funny main character Twitch chat, who never misses on their jokes. One stream per Doug channel, yours and Ludwig's Twitch. You can't be overloaded with that much content. Also streaming to Ludwig's Twitch is funny. He has an idea. For a month, you stream only on YouTube. If you only use your addictive videos as funny as on Twitch. I could! <laughs> we could do that. That's true. Hey, Doug. Uh, why not stream to Doug, Doug, Doug? That way you skip a step in having to download and upload the VODs? It is a straight injection? Maybe. Could do that, maybe. Um. It's kind of like may as well go all in and just the resolution on YouTube just absolute dog shit <laughs> advertised to watch on Twitch. That is such a good idea. Yeah, and then the title is YouTube is having issues come watch on Twitch for the full quality. And I and that's the title of every stream forever. Why not stream That's to a Duke, sick Duke, idea. Duke, Doug, and then you don't need to re-upload VODs. Oh, yeah, I could do that. It's just Again, I think the idea is if I'm going to stream to YouTube, the intention is so that people on YouTube can easily find it, not that they then have to like go to another channel. I know that you mentioned money doesn't mean much, however, I remember reading somewhere that AdSense from people who watch on smart TVs is quite substantial. Maybe a consideration since that money could fund fun IRL shows. That makes no sense. It could be true, but why would... Why would smart TVs make more money? <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe they serve higher revenue ads to smart TV viewers? I don't, I don't know. Oh, maybe it's because there's no ad block. <laughs> That's probably why. Um, it just with finances, I, uh, I am perfectly good and I'm very fortunate in that I can use sponsorships to fund projects like this. That is a much more consistent and easy way to fund bigger projects rather than trying to optimize for ad revenue. As I've talked about in the past, I don't like I don't uh, I don't lean into ads in general. Like if I wanted to make more ad revenue, I would just play ads on Twitch and I would put more ads in my YouTube videos. Right. Um, I've mentioned this before, but with with my YouTube videos, we put ads every like seven or eight minutes or something like that. And the recommendation is to do them every minute and a half. So if I wanted more ad money, I could literally quadruple the amount of money that we make on YouTube like right now by pressing a button. So there's like a lot, lot, lot more money Ladies that I could just, just make. It's time for ads. But before this joke, I never played ads on Twitch. Now that this joke has started, technically I'm playing ads on Twitch all the time. But um, but yeah, like so. Money, if I wanted to just generate like a lot, lot more more money, like we're talking like hundreds of thousands of dollars that I could just press a button and make that, then I could do it. Um, I would rather do it through sponsorships because I think that that is much less, um, that sacrifices much less of the experience is is my personal opinion. So, uh, yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a weird like very fortunate position in life that I like I could squeeze you guys for lots more money. Um, but I don't need to, and I would rather do that in other ways by having you, you know, watch a factor ad. So, um, yeah. So anyway, at, like optimizing for ads is not the consideration for YouTube is all. Um, I can do, I can make money other ways, fortunately. There's a good reason why we all hate YouTube chat. I mean, look at Ludwig. He's a ugly swine. Well, that's just not true. Look at that jawline. Look at that mustache. All right, how many, uh... How many more alerts do you have? Oh, I think we have one more. How do I even join this Minecraft? <laughs> you got it. I think you got it. 
Yeah, I'll probably turn off the ads joke before too long because I like the idea that I'm not playing ads on to Twitch. To let you know, the TV version of YouTube is far more aggressive with ads because boomers don't care as much. Huh. Also, Twitch is on the Nintendo Switch. Interesting. That's how I watch the Shuffler show on my TV. Interesting. At any rate, like I said, I, I it's it's uh, not only not a priority for me to have you guys watch more ads, I actively try to put less ads than I, sh than I need to because I think ads... Uh, you know, hurt the experience, and I'm fortunate to be making money in other ways. So uh, I will, I will not take that into consideration. But watching on smart like TVs and stuff, I think is is a pretty good um, point. Anyways, we are all caught up. That is the stream. Thanks for hanging out and talking. This was fun. I, I actually had a great time just chatting about the show, chatting about general Twitch YouTube stuff. Uh, I want to do a shorter one because I, I gotta take care of some stuff still. I'm going to give myself one day to chill tomorrow. Hey, Doug, as a representative of the Sunday. Funny Guy Council, in a completely unbiased opinion, I agree that we are funnier than YouTube chat. There you Look go. Look at all these old and bald jokes. <laughs> Look at all these divorced men trying their hardest to impress Guy Fiery sequel. There you go. There you go. It, Twitch chat does not miss. Um, I think Sunday I will. I'll probably prep streams and then Monday back to normal streaming is approximately the plan. But yeah. Things, things coming. It was interesting to get more info. Cool. Yeah, I, I think this stuff is really, really interesting. So um, hopefully some of y'all do too. Uh, I have slowly learned over time that that a lot of the audience seems to enjoy seeing how things are done, which is great because I love talking about how things are done. Uh, that's why I started programming on stream, and uh, people seem to like it. So it's cool. I really enjoy talking about this stuff. Now you can go spend lots and lots and lots of money to put on a show uh, where you trick your friends with a tennis match <laughs> sweet all right um thanks y'all appreciate it thanks for a lot of people subbed and gave support today thank you guys appreciate it thank you thank you um i should be back monday if not monday it should be tuesday and that is it goodbye chat i will see you then i thought you guys were calling me bald just now and then i realized it was old chat from last sunday uh and of course i've cursed this because you will now call me bald all right bye have a good one